another image of, uh, I think this one is M13. I'll show you my gallery this way. Um, but uh, this one's not a great image. However, over time, the EV scope is taking an image every four seconds. And so over time, it is stacking the images and you see it improve. With some sequences that I've taken, the first couple of images are very grainy. And then gradually that grain disappears in later images, which have been taken over longer periods. And over a couple of minutes time, and if you actually take a, as much as um, 20 minutes or a half an hour, you can get really sharp images. And I had one of um, uh, M17 that I took a little while ago that came out really well. I was very pleased with that. Uh, if I can find that one, uh, I can show that to you. But uh, there was a sequence that I took with that where you could actually see the grain in the early shots and in the later shots, uh, it was really clear and smooth. So uh, you do see that gradual improvement of the image. Um, see if I can find. Are there ways to tweak the parameters, the stacking parameters? That, like in the phone app before uh, you can play with? You can, you can tweak the exposure uh, but I don't know if you can adjust the uh, stacking process. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't, frankly, the weather in San Francisco hasn't allowed me uh, much of an opportunity to use the scope and really play with it the way I'd, I'd like to. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, there are some tweaks you can do uh, with the, the app, or you can export the app to another computer and use Photoshop and, and play with it a little bit more that way, which a, a number of people have done. There are a couple of EV scope users groups on Facebook, uh, one based in LA, one based in Europe. Uh, so there are a, a lot of people showing off their images and talking about their techniques and what they've done to bring out uh, details in certain images. So do people, uh, again, like, I, I'm fine. Do people well, download the, um, can you download the raw images and then like reprocess them to like, for example, the Orion Nebula, the central part is just blown out too, too bright, you know, then, kind of reprocess mm -hmm. them to get more detail out of them? I believe you can. And uh, in fact, I've seen some people on the um, uh, European EV scope group uh, say that they have done that too. I, I tried to see the Veil Nebula in their shot and I don't get, just, I took your raw image and processed it some more. Here it is, bang. So that is possible. By the way, I just it want to... says your connection is uh, kind of spotty, thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, your 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 screen gets smaller and pixelated every like five to ten seconds. We can still hear you. Um, yeah, I still, I I do have a very slow connection at home. Ah, okay. So my apologies for that. No, the, I just want to give you a, a heads up in case you you didn't know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Actually, I have been aware of that. I just have a lousy internet. Okay. And uh, Bing, I just wanted to say thank you for the work you guys do at the Academy. I uh, was really bummed when the renovation happened some years ago, and it was sort of like the whole uh, astronom uh, astronomy focus and the uh, planetarium. Uh, you, had the, you had this beautiful uh, projection planetarium, and then it was all about life sciences going on inside there. And I was like, I love life sciences, but I love astronomy more. And uh, it was, it's really good to see in the last few years yeah. it really coming back and folks like you promoting. Um, it's really important to me for today's kids to be able to see more about astronomy. I mean, we have, we don't really have a, um, you know, NASA is not what it was when I was six years, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. Right. And so uh, whatever exposure we can give to kids, I think that's really important. And I'm really grateful you guys are doing that. However, however you guys are able to keep the world rounder and rounder and rounder and yes yeah. <laughs> spherical jason J jason you're a, you're a life scientist no 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 no. I, I was saying that i i was i didn't mind life sciences being so prevalent at the oh, renovated uh, uh academy but i was really bummed to see a, a real shift away from uh, space science and now it seems like it's coming back so nice so uh, the, the, the current uh, yeah. management has a different perspective than um, the, the former uh, uh, administration did. And so um, they, they do want us to be able to speak to all the sciences resident at the academy. So we're using the capabilities of the planetarium to do that. 
to talk about other subjects like earthquakes and coral reefs and things like that. But we, we haven't forgotten our astronomical roots. So we, we do still do astronomy shows um, and do things like this. Here's a shot of the uh, of M27 that I took uh, a little while ago. I'll try to, to show this to you right there. Um, whoops, did I lose that? Okay, this is a, um, I'm trying to see. I think. What, uh, the length of this, uh, this is a four minute exposure. So that's a four minute exposure of M27 on the EV scope. And again, you don't normally see that, that nebulosity or color. Uh, can anyone hear SFAA astronomy? Yeah, I think that's PJ, that's, guys. Uh, PJ, can you say something? Maybe your volume needs to be turned up a bit. Okay. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's very uh, patchy. I have the volume too low. So I'm finally connected. I can now uh, make different people hosts so I can share your screens and discuss your photos or use your EV scope to show us the sky if you're outside. I don't know how clear it is. Not so very. Look at for a very short time in the afternoon. So uh, who wants to go first, uh, sharing their photos or uh, discussing their EV scope or whichever? Bing, uh, do you mind? Uh, uh, I, I can, yeah, if, if uh, you let me share the images from my gallery, I'd be happy to okay. show what I've got so far. I'll do that. So you are now host. Share content. You that says, what do you want to share? I'm not sure what you're seeing here. I'm trying to show. We're we're seeing a essentially a blank screen with your name on it. Okay. I think you haven't hit share screen. <laughs> yeah, if you hit share screen, then it's gonna it's, it's gonna be like a sub menu that pops up, and it's gonna ask you which window you want to share, so to speak. Uh, let me try that again. Yeah. So, share content. Screen photos, iCloud Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive, Box. Website URL bookmark or whiteboard. Do you have oh, uh, you want desktop or something? Do you have the uh, uh, EV scope app running on your iPad? I got the um, I got the EV scope app on. Okay, so I I think it should be an option. Uh, like share to an app or share this. Does it, is there an option for just sharing the screen? So no matter what app is on, uh, we chose that. Or what you can do is uh, close everything except the thing that you want to share so that there's nothing else for you to choose from and just share that. I haven't used Zoom on an iPad, so I'm not sure what the options that show up are. Can't do much uh, tech support on that. <laughs> Past the you know, push the share screen button. So. Well, I I had done that. Zoom window. Share screen. And it says everything will be recorded. It's not listing um, the EV scope as a shareable option in that list. That's what that's not running. It just says you have an option to just share screen. 
Yeah, if you if you just share your screen and then just I guess manually open up your EV Scope app. That's what I've been doing. Then you share screen. And it goes to a screen that says everything will be recorded, enable do not disturb to prevent unexpected notifications, screen recording, camera roll, meet, messenger, zoom. Start broadcast. So something is happening here that is not as clear as what you're describing to me. Okay. What you either write, is that a pop up or a menu? Uh, which? The thing you just read with, oh, with uh, say, get something will be recorded, blah, blah, gallery. Uh, that, that, that appears to be a screen. It takes up the entire screen on my iPad. Okay, is there, are there uh, many options? Dick marks or? Camera roll, meet, messenger, zoom. Is there a, is there a way you can choose? Can you tap zoom? Or uh, rather, uh, that's not about the, uh, uh, water gallery or something. Well, I'm not having really good luck with this, so maybe Wait, we should go on to somebody else. There was an option that said camera roll. Isn't that what you want us to see? Uh, no, I want you to see the EV scope gallery. Ah, okay. So yeah, I don't, I, I don't know what we did last time. You, you were able to share. Yeah, I was on Zoom on my iPhone, and I used the camera on my iPhone to show you the image on my iPad. Uh, we could try that. It's, I it's can do that. You can also try to plug your cable from your computer onto into your iPad, and then when you share, you should have an option to share your iPad. Uh, I'm not near my computer right now. I'm just the iPad. Oh, you're off the phone. IPad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the iPad to get on Zoom. But we were able to do some, at least for a short while. Uh, we did something funny last time, so I'll I'll try that. Well, let's try and see what happens here. I heard anything? Yeah. Sorry, everybody. I'm trying to get this to work. Um, in the meantime, if actually, if if while I'm trying to get this to work, if if one of you others want to pick up and talk about your work, that would be true. Somebody else wants to be host for a few minutes. Who's brave? Sure, I can be. Nice. Let's go. Uh, does Bing have to transfer it, or <laughs> no? I'll have to. Actually, yeah, Bing might be able to do it. I can. I can reclaim host for a second. Okay. Okay. Uh. So. Okay. Wait. Hold on. So you are now host. Okay, so there was um, an asteroid in the sky in April uh, this year, and I've never imaged an asteroid before. And in the news, people were scared, <laughs> especially back, back in the Middle East, like they hear something from, like NASA is saying something. And then, you know, the, the fake news, like asteroid is going to hit the earth. <laughs> oh, so like uh, there was an asteroid uh, which is um, two kilometer in size, and it is uh, one of those asteroids that orbits between Mars and Earth. Um, it has some kind of a, an eccentric um, orbit, 32 years, and it came close by Earth on April 29, 2020, this year. So it was moving fast that actually you can see the movement of the asteroid. Uh, if you look at the screen, and if you took take one picture, you wouldn't notice. And this is only a three second exposure, uh, 500 millimeter. But if you take a sequence of images and then you make it into a video, you will see the asteroid moving. And I'll play the video for, for you. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yep. How long is this? How many seconds exposure did you take? This is three seconds for each frame, but this is over two hours. 
Okay. Every 30 seconds, I take one frame and then made it in a video. So it was really nice to see. This was my first as asteroid to image. Um, now, if you take a picture, for, it's now far from Earth. So if you take even one day of pictures, you wouldn't say, see it moving. Um, did you did you got a did you capture a like a um a shooting star in the few frames before? That, no, that that was uh, that was a satellite. Oh, that okay. passed by. Um, so that was that was the thing I noticed the other day when I posted two shots with that uh, filter that I took. Uh, they were pretty much one after the other. They were the same, uh, both sixty second exposures, and they had a small trail. My assumption was that it was a satellite. So my question is, how do you know this wasn't a satellite? Did you find data um, on the asteroid? Oh, oh no, this this is not a satellite. This is over two hours. Oh, so over two, over two hours. Oh, okay. okay. This movement is over two hours. And um, I actually, I was able to image the asteroid because um, I looked up the maps and I know that this is the path of the asteroid. So yeah, okay. that's what I was asking. That's I, awesome. Yeah. So I, I couldn't really point the telescope to the asteroid. I pointed to the middle star, this one. Yeah. And I know the name of this one from the maps. And um, I just waited before the asteroid passes and then it came across. That's great. That's and um, in picture, this was the the asteroid over two hours, yeah. trailing uh, over two hours. Wow. That's really cool. This is the inverted image. That's when you combine all your images. Yeah, I combined those. Are, I chose the, the best frames um, and combined all of the images. And my scope was a, lot, a little bit out of um, level and polar alignment. So, I, so you can see that the stacking was like the frames were not exactly <laughs> at the same spot. But this is the actual movement and the exact location. All right. That's great. Well, it's good that the Tiger was able to get all your stars together, even though you were not alive. And obviously, it makes it see a nice video when instead of having it uh, move by shake, like your scope actually did. Well, thanks. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's not family. We were our host uh, last month. Um, if I, I I can I can go next. Uh, okay. This is Angus. If, if nobody wants to go. Okay. Well, I'll reclaim host again and assign you those. We're getting an echo. I'm going yeah. to. If you can mute uh, everybody, Angus. If I can mute everybody, okay. Uh, I don't hear an echo anymore, so maybe we're all good. People can unmute themselves as they need to talk. Let's see. Mute all current and new participants. Yes. Okay, so everyone should be muted by now. Um, I think I'm just gonna. I'm gonna let it just sort of died out in a few seconds. Um, and then... Sorry to bug you. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourself if you have any questions. Um, but I will begin. Um, let me see here. And I guess I... I kind of, you know, I kind of want to tell, you know, a story of how I started, you know, this sort of crazy and unexpected journey. Um, and, you know, first of all, I want to thank uh, 
the San Francisco a Amateur Astronomers for inviting me to sort of give a talk because it's kind of crazy that I'm, I'm talking because I, I only just started this hobby. Um, so. um, okay, let's start here. So, you know, how, um, how did I start? And that quote may not make a lot of sense to you guys right now, but it, it was really meaningful to me. And you'll see why in a second. So, uh, like a lot of people, I started with uh, Common and Eagle Eyes. Um, it was, it captivated me. Um, and, you know, reading the news and hearing what everyone said, I, I said to myself, well, how hard can it be to find it? You know, it, on the news, it says it's massive and that it's, it's quote unquote visible with the naked eyes. So, you know, how hard can it be? And the key word here is that you know, these are other people's pictures, uh, not my own. And so with that, you know, I spent two nights out in the middle of nowhere, um, just looking for the comet. And this is a actual shot from the viewfinder of my camera. And the reason why the number 215 means a lot to me is because right above 215 here, on the bottom left of the screen, you see a little blue dot, and that was the comet, the comet Neowise. And I told my friends who were there with me at the time, and I said, oh, look, it's right above 215. And one of them said to me, and I quote, but I don't see 215 in the sky because none of us could see it. Um, and I always remember that quote. I, it made me laugh, but it also made me sort of like, oh man, you're right, you can't see it. Um, and, you know, this is the best picture I could find of uh, Comet Neowise at the time. And this is back in July. Um, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's that little, it's that little dot in the middle that I've circled. And right there and then, you know, I was on the side of Page Mill Road in Palo Alto. And I said to myself, there's got to be better. There's got to be a better way to do this. This is not, there's no way this is, this, there's no way this is what everyone else is doing. So I started to research. I started to learn what it takes to take decent photos of, you know, deep sky objects and nebula. And this was my beginner's, uh, beginner setup. And, and I had read that, you know, the Skywatcher uh, Star Adventure Pro is a good beginner's mount uh, because it's it's inexpensive first and foremost inexpensive um, it's portable and it does a good enough job at tracking the night nice sky and for those people who don't who aren't familiar that you know tracking a night nice sky is essential because the objects in the sky are actually rotated in relation to our station or the sun so that's why when you get a mount it has to be a tracking mount so, so then you freeze whatever you're looking at in frame. Um, so that was my map, and I try to repurpose whatever I can to pass the same way. And this was my first sort of success. And the Lagoon Nebula will always have a special place in my heart because this was the first nebula that I was able to find on my own manually, just, you know, we just referencing where Jupiter was, where Saturn was, and that I had an idea that Lagoon Nebula would be around that area. And uh, it took me a couple of tries, a couple of nights, but I finally found it. And to give you an idea of, of how knowledgeable I was, people would talk about total integration time, right? And I can tell you that even to this day, I don't even know what I was doing at the time. So I cannot tell you what my total integration time was. Uh, this is probably like half an hour or so or something. I, I have no idea. But at that point, I, I, I told myself that unless I can find most of these objects manually first, I refuse to use any of the automated mounts because I think it's very important for me if I am to continue on with this hobby 
to actually learn the night sky and be able to sort of have an idea of where things are. And to this day, most of the pictures that you're going to see later are of objects that I've already found manually first. Uh, of course, I've, I have moved on to a beefier mount uh, that is easier to use and, you know, it saves me time. I'm not, you know, manually looking for stuff that I've already found. Um, so the first picture I want to share with you guys, it's, everyone is, most people will be familiar with this, is the M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. And if you aren't familiar with where it is, um, most of the objects that you're going to see from me will be towards the eastern part of the sky because that's sort of my view. Um, and I'm just lucky that a lot of the objects are towards the area. Um, and so for the Andromeda Galaxy, it's towards the east. It rises from the east. And if you look for the constellation Pegasus, then Andromeda will be somewhere around here. Um, and I have a story behind it because my first time shooting Andromeda, I didn't know I found it. I, and I think I posted it on the Facebook page as well that, hey, I saw this little orange blob. I think it's Andromeda, but it doesn't look like Andromeda because a lot of the pictures you see of, of Andromeda Galaxy is, you know, there's got a lot, of, it's got a lot of blues. But my picture from my camera, it didn't. It, it was really just an orange smear. So I think somebody re responded back that, yeah, that was Andromeda. So then uh, the next time we had clear skies, I went back out and I shot Andromeda. This is what I was able to get. Um, and, uh, and here are some, uh, some fun facts about Andromeda if you care about uh, reading it. Or honestly, I much rather you guys just enjoy the picture. Um, you, know, you guys can read this stuff on Wikipedia on your own free time. Uh, hey, you you just, hey. You turned on the music. Oh, is it super loud? starting to overtake your like at certain parts of music it starts to overtake your speed. Okay, let me let me just let me just turn it off. There. Sorry, I didn't know. Thanks. It was good mood music. <laughs> yeah, I well, agree. I, I totally agree. I didn't know it was gonna be that loud because uh Yeah, well whatever. <laughs> actually kind of enjoying like uh, uh, listening to the music <laughs> do you guys want to back on then but I, I don't i don't want it to cut i don't want it to cut out so i i i much rather just have it off yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it off um okay so yeah back to andromeda so this was um now that I'm, i kind of know what i'm doing i can tell you guys stuff like, you know, integration time. And this took about two hours and two minutes. Um, <sighs> so, uh, the next target would be um, M42 Orion. And for some reason, whenever I see Orion, I, I, I think onion. Yeah, I don't too. know why. But me the too. first, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, um, I forgot who it was to show me. I was like, oh, Orion? I mean, uh, Onion? Oh, okay, there's a, there's a nebula called Onion. All right. Um, and uh, Orion Nebula is always, it's also towards the east, but more uh, southeast. Um, and uh, at the, right now, at this time of the year, it rises. Um, you have to wait until like 1 a.m. or 2 or 2 a.m. to even see it. Um, and this is the picture that I got, and I posted a different version earlier, and then I realized the previous version, I was a little bit out of focus, so this is a reshot, and I actually just finished it last night, um, and I was editing this in the afternoon, um, and this was shot uh, with a uh, Optidon, uh L enhanced filter. I think some of you guys are familiar with it. Um, to me, the Optilon L enhanced filter is kind of like it's kind of like taking a test and 
you have a cheat sheet in front of you. It's sort of like that, because I think I think this is a, 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 a this is an amazing filter for Nebula. Um, again, some fun facts about Neb about Orion. Um, you guys can read it, um, but I, I really hope you guys can, can just enjoy the picture. Um, the story here is that yes, the total integration time is about two hours and thirteen minutes, but I actually had four hours worth of data. The last half was washed out by clouds um, about from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. It was all cloudy. So um, I couldn't use those data. Uh, I wish I could um, because I think I'm, I'm missing a little bit of the running man, a little bit of the blue. So, um, but I'll take what I can get. Um, the next picture is uh, the California Nebula, um, and I guess is this all in the city? Can you hear? Is that? Are you are you taking all these pictures from the city? I am. I am from my backyard. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's possible. It, 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 what, it, what part it, of the city you're you're in? Like, I'm in a, I'm in the sunset. Mm, okay. Oh. Yeah. So I mean, if there's if, if if there's fog or if there's cloud, I'm the first to get hit. Oh, but is yeah. that like reasonably dark looking uh, west towards the Pacific? No, absolutely not. Um, no, all the all the water that's in the air there takes everything from downtown on the east side of the city and reflects it back at you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, essentially, everywhere I look, there's there there's a glow and there's a hue. Um, it's um, but. You know, you got to use filters, um, and I wish I can photograph without filters. Um, so, moving on to California Nebula, um, this is uh, this is another really strong uh, hydrogen alpha nebula towards the east, um, and it, this is actually really easy to find. If you can see Pleiades, or other known, otherwise known as the Seven Sisters, California is right to the left of the Pleiades. Um, you can start to look for this at about, I want to say, um, 10 or maybe 11 p.m. Um, and this was a success because, again, this was my first time using the Optolon L Enhanced filter. And I picked this target because I, I, I read that it is, it is strong in hydrogen, so I will see a strong red response with the Optolon. Uh, L enhanced, and um, I was not disappointed. Um, That's great. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah. Um, although, if this was if this was in yellow, I would call this the banana uh, nebula. Um, <laughs> it's like someone you off too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I have I have my thoughts about how people name deep sky objects. Some, some of them don't make any sense. Um, but, uh, and this is a success story because this picture, again, you know, you know, fun fact, if you want to read it, go ahead. This picture only had one hour and 12 minutes of integration time with the Optolong L enhanced filter. Um, and I was, I was blown away with just one hour. I, I really expected it to really not be that impressive. Although I can say that um, I think I do have a little bit of noise that I couldn't get rid of. Um, maybe that's contributed by my short integration time, um, but uh, I was overjoyed by how this uh, how this picture turned out. Um, the California Nebula looks more like California optically. In your photo, you have a lot of extra nebulosity that you cannot see with the naked eye. Yeah, That's yeah. Like kind of so yeah. the brighter, the brighter spots in the nebula is what looks like California. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys can, can you guys see my mouse if I if I if I were to move it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think we're like right here where San Francisco is. That's what I'm thinking. We're 
It might be interesting uh, to see what it look like if you walk back the exposure just a little bit. It might be. So, um, so um, I didn't include the exposure information, but this was eight minutes at eight at eight hundred ISO. Um, so you're right that I I may have overexposed it. Um, so the next target, um, this one I also. This is also a second attempt, um, and I also just finished this last night. It is the Bubble Nebula and the Lassa Call uh, Nebula. Um, some of my friends here, they know that I have a thing against uh, lobsters, crabs, and uh, sea creatures in general <laughs> with claws. Uh, <laughs> shut up, Michael. I, 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 heard, I, heard, I heard Michael laughing. Uh, but uh, I... This, this actually took a little bit of guts for me to do this because um, I'm terrified of um, what I call sea monsters. <laughs> you know, like, you know, they don't need claws or an armor. Just, they don't need it. Anyways, uh, so you can find this region of, uh, of, of nebulae towards the east again, uh, right on the tip of Cassiopeia, and for reference, Andromeda would be around this area. Um, and this is my second attempt, not because I was terrified the first time, but because um, the first time I shot it, I had terrible star trails that I couldn't use. Um, and for those of you who don't know what star trails is, it's, it's literally what it sounds like. It's just a star that has been elongated because your mountain is long is no longer tracking properly. So you can choose to use the data, but I, I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not using it. And this is the picture that I was able to take last night. Um, on the top right will be my worst enemy, the lobster claw, and then um, the bottom will be the bubble nebula. It's hard to see the bubble because I don't have that kind of focal length yet. So um, I can't, I, I really can't make out, well, I can kind of make it out, but I, I don't really want to say for certain. Um, as for this uh, this red patch of hydrogen gas, I have no idea what that is. So it's just there. Um, I believe that's the heart nebula. Is it? Yeah. I think the heart nebula is further down in Cassiopeia. Well, it looks like it. Yeah. I have no idea what that is. Um, and but here, it's here yeah. And uh, here you see uh, a patch of uh, a patch of rice. Um, yeah. And um, again, fun facts. Uh, feel free to read it if you care. Um, this was as of last, last night and uh, about two and a half hours, I think. Um, this is a, this was also shot with the uh, Apollon Ellen uh, Ellen Hans filter. Um, so yeah, the bubble yeah. nebula is a tough one because it's embedded in that patch. Yeah, the... yeah, and and I, I simply don't have that kind of magnification yet. Um, but well, it's easy to overexpose. I mean, if you if you're you can capture it with uh, your focal length. It's just that the nebula makes it hard to to get it at the right. You know, you need the right exposure or the right sensitivity or else. Yeah. You... But it's in there. Yeah, it is. And 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 to tell you the truth, I may have also lost it in um in pro in post processing. Yeah. I, I, I don't I don't like this final result of post processing. And I don't know if it's because there's a lots of call here and it gives off the illusion of you know of a of a piercing sort of action, but for some reason, the stars, it, it, it is, it's striking to me. Like it's all, it, it feels like it's jumping on the picture and I'm, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of this, of this picture, but I think I share anyways. I actually like it very much. Uh, oh, wow. Thank you. The, the cluster is beautiful below. Uh, Thank you. I like how the nebulosity is, is shown. Uh, I think it's a little over overexposed on the on the 
uh, Nebula that contains the the bubble, but other than that, it's it's great. I like thank I you. the stars. You can thank see you. that it's definitely in the Milky Way. There's so many stars behind it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, yeah. So then, I guess I guess my next attempt will be you know a little bit less exposure time, so that is not overexposed. Um, somebody's drawing a claw. That better not be Michael or Julia. I'm just saying it could look like a helmet to you. Oh. Now you can stop thinking it's a claw. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. Um, <laughs> that's a good one. Um, now, the next picture I'm going to show you is actually not the plan for that night. Um, I'm going to show you the North America Nebula, but I actually plan to shoot the Pelican Nebula. But oh, <laughs> on my but on, but on my on my first framing shot, I was blown away that oh my god! Wait, hold up! Wait, wait a minute! Is that the North America Nebula? And then I realized it was actually stealing the show. So I changed my night and I just continue on with the with the exposure and. It, and out came the North America Nebula. And to find it, uh, once again, you look towards the east. And at this time of the year, by nightfall, you're pretty much looking straight up at Zenith. Um, and this is the picture that I got. And, and this is the reason why that when I saw the first, uh, the first shot, I realized that this night is it's just going to be North America. Um, and this was once again shot with the Optilon L Enhance filter. Um, so if it sounds like the L Enhance filter is a good filter, it is. Uh, and I really, I really recommend people trying that out. Um, I know there's a new version called the L Extreme, but that is sort of unattainable right now because it's either sold out or people want like $400 for it. I'm not paying four hundred dollars for a piece of glass. Um, it's fu it's funny how the markets work. Whatever yeah. it sells like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two months ago, the Upload L Pro was the thing to buy. Nobody was using. Yeah. Now you can, because everybody's going for the L Enhance. Yeah. Um, but I, I I will I will say that I I. I don't recommend the L Enhance as your only filter because it's it's really hard to frame your shots because it it, it does black out a lot of light. It, it is kind of like a I haven't used a narrow band filter yet, but I imagine it's kind of like that where it's just a lot of light is cut off. So for you to frame it, you would you would waste a lot of time framing it. So what I've been doing is I've been framing all of my shots with just a regular light pollution filter where a lot of light still gets in. And then once I know, you know, where I am and how I want to frame my target, then I'll sort of disassemble everything and put in the uh, L enhanced filter. Um, so there is one key fact that I want to point out here is that this North America nebula, if it was lit up in the night sky, it would actually take up the space of about 10 full moons. So these objects, are they're quite massive you know the width so they say it's about 140 light years in diameter so it's massive um and this picture um took me about three hours to uh to complete um so the next one the next night i did focus in on the pelican nebula uh, and in, in order to do that, I had to use a different telescope with more focal length, so I'm a little bit more zoomed in. Um, and it's in the same area of the sky, so I'm not going to go over it again. Um, but here it is. And um, this was actually shot with a, just a light pollution filter, not L Enhance. Uh, this was shot with the Itis LPS-D2 filter. Um, and... 
I think it does an awesome job at blocking out a lot of the uh, city lights. Um, never mind the sort of top portion where I sort of screwed it up in the in the post processing, but I really do like this picture. I think uh, it really shows the the flying motion of a pelican. I well, we live in San Francisco, so I'm gonna call it the pigeon nebula. Um, so yeah, so this this was about what three hours, three and a half hours for me to complete. Um, by the way, I can't read the stuff on the right because that's where people's faces are at. So I. I just see three hours, so, I, so I'm going to say three hours. It sounds about right. Um, so it just goes to show you that if you do want to shoot in the city, you really can just use a light pollution filter, and it'll turn out great. Um, but it's not all good and gravy. Uh, and I want to put the slide here first because... The next target that you're gonna see, it's my, it's my nightmare, essentially. Um, the next guy will find a way to bamboozle you, one way or another. Um, you walk outside, you're gonna get screwed up somehow, some way. It, it will happen to all of you guys. And these are some of the stories that I have. You know, obviously, I can't find it. Whatever I'm looking for, I can't find it. Cool, I found it. But wait, wait a minute, that. Three hours later, I realized that's not even it. Okay, now that I have everything set up and the the weather forecast says no cloud and no fog, but all of a sudden, half an hour later, clouds and fog. Um, and this is this is a user error. Um, sometimes when I shoot near Zenith, I want to make sure that I get like maximum amount of air time. So <laughs> I put my mount right up against my house and I walked away. <laughs> then I two or three hours later I came back and I checked my memory card. It was it was just close up pictures of my wall. Um, sometimes when you set up a rig, it for whatever reason it doesn't it's not gonna go your way. It's not gonna balance. You can't find Polaris. You can't align it. You drop something. Who knows, right? And sometimes you spend all night setting up, and by the time you're done setting up, you look up in the sky, and whatever your object is is behind your house or behind the street or behind the tree, and your night is done. You spend the whole night setting up, and you have no picture to show for it. And this is real raccoons. <laughs> I had <laughs> I had a family of raccoons like scoping around me, and and then and this was in my backyard, so I was a little I was like, hey man, like go away, and. The whole night, I was just sort of fending off raccoons. Um, all right. I found it. Everything's working out. The, the rake is set up. But I also found Star Trail. So you, you got to toss the data. And I mentioned about framing, right? So I typically use a really high ISO to frame the target just so that it saves a lot more time. But I also forget to reset the ISO to a lower ISO so that my <laughs> entire session is, is white out. Toss the data. Forgot to take off the lens cap. Yeah, that, ooh, man, that, that one hurt. That one hurt. That was four hours. Four hours. Oh. Ooh, that one hurt. That one hurt. That one hurt a lot. <laughs> because I don't even know why I forgot to take off the lens cap. <laughs> um, forgot to use the correct filter or forgot, forgot to use filter period so again everything is white out can't use it toss the data and this happens to me on more than one occasion it's 4 a.m it's the middle of the session i went outside to check how the mount was doing how my images are going because i usually timed it so that you know every hour the camera will stop and I can, you know, check what the previous pictures look like. So I walk out at 4 a.m. and, you know, I'm tired, a little sleepy, and I forget how wide the tripod legs are on the ground floor. And, you know, it's darkness, right? 
So I would kick the leg of a male. And when you kick the leg of a male, you're pretty much off. You're not aligned anymore. So at 4 a.m., should I realign? Or should I quit ash photography altogether? I, I feel that. I totally feel that. Oh, man. <laughs> it's so painful. It is. It is. And you never, you never remember just how wide the stance of your, of your mount is. Uh, and I, and I put this here because the next target that you see, everything on this list has happened to me while capturing the next target. And I have had more attempts on the next target than I have my fingers to count with. So, and I also renamed the nebula. You know, people call it the Veil Nebula. I call it the PETA Nebula. And I think everyone knows what PETA stands for. Um, and I'm going to spend a little more time with this nebula because it's, it's, it, ha it, has a, it has a place in my heart. So this is also in the Cygnus region towards the east. And uh, around this time of the year, um, it's, you're pretty much looking up at Zenith by, by nighttime fall. Um, and this was the picture that I got. That's great. Uh, great. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, I do want to spend a little more time on this picture because, because it took me a lot of time to get it. So for this nebula only, I'm going to go over some of the details. So it's, it's, a, it's a supernova remnant of a star that is 20 times the mass of our sun. And the explosion happened about 10,000 to 20,000 years ago. We're not too sure. Uh, it's about, uh, about 2,400 light years away. The diameter is about 130 light years across. And this is one of the reasons why it's so difficult to capture this target because it's so wide that if you're sort of lost in space, you don't really know where the other half of the nebula is. Um, and it's got a strong presence of, of, of hydrogen alpha, oxygen three, and sulfur. And currently it is still expanding at a velocity of 1.5 million kilometers per hour. Um, and the most important fact is that this is a certified PETA to photograph. Um, now, I, I, I know I saw, I said a lot of bad things about this picture and this nebula in general, but when you, after what I've gone through with this picture, I think it's really breathtaking. Um, it's, I've had maybe 15 nights of trying to photograph this, this nebula um, and it's all worth it. This picture here took about three hours to complete. Um, and one of, the mo one of the most challenging part about this region in general is the sheer abundance of stars. It, it's very easy to have your picture looking like a, uh, like a static screen on like on an old TV. Um, yeah, this was, this, this nebula taught me so much about setting up about enduring some of these sessions and then finally, you know, post-processing. It, it taught me a lot. Uh, and that's why I think it's really breathtaking. Uh, even though this, I don't think this is the best picture ever, far from it, but it's the best I can do right now. And, and, I, and I love it, I love it. Um, and I do wanna spend some time on, on the Eastern and the Western Vale. Um, and the Western Vale will be this region over here. Hey, Angus, uh, yeah. can I ask what's the focal length of the last picture? So this was taken with my William Optics uh, Space Cat 51 at 250 millimeters. And I'm on oh. a crop sensor. I'm on a crop sensor. So uh, you guys can do the math. I can't do the math. Right? Um, and OK, and I, okay got it. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll tell you that. I barely cropped this picture. I only cropped out maybe like one or two 
centimeters of the edges to get rid of the of the stacking artifacts. But I I, I barely I barely caught this picture. Um, so then, the Western Veil vale is this part right here. To I guess to your right. Um, and it's commonly referred to as the witch's broom. Um, and um, I took a different telescope to, to be a little more zoomed in. So this was, this was at 430 millimeters on my crop sensor. Um, and uh, yeah, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do much cropping here either. I think I cropped out the bottom, but that's about it. Like width-wise, what you're seeing is what you're seeing. Um, and I think if I were to use a different telescope or maybe even longer exposure time, I can capture some more of the green of the oxygen. Um, but I only had about an hour and a half here um, because I, I, at that time I kind of felt like Vale was getting to me again, like some some random BS was about to happen. So uh, I actually had to, had to end the night at one at one hour 30. Um, but the next image of the Eastern Veil vale Nebula um, is probably my favorite image. Um, I also completed that just last night. Um, so here it is. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and this is more, this has more to do with the filter that I use. Again, this is the L Enhanced Optolon. And it's really, it, it's really able to help me um, isolate the hydrogen alpha that you see and also the oxygen green and really blocked out everything else. Um, yeah, um, I think between capturing and post-processing, this was probably my, my favorite picture so far. Um, and, you know, people have called this the Eastern Veil vale Nebula. And remember how I said earlier that I have a, I have some thoughts about how people name things in the sky. By the way, this took about three hours to take. Um, I like to rename it as Joker Smile. Um, because it's, that's what I see. I see, I see Joker when I, when I see this nebula. Um, and that's really all the pictures that I have. Um, I want to say thank you and I'm, I'm help, I'm happy to answer any questions. And I put 215, thank you, Jason. And I put 215 in the middle because it all started with this little blue dot that I told myself there has got to be a way for me to do better. Um, and I'm really glad that I was. I'm really glad that, that I was dissatisfied with what I did for common neolies because if it wasn't, then I wouldn't be able to pursue this hobby and have these images to share. Um, so that's all I have. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, that's all and, great. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's definitely something um, I struggle to like, like most of the people struggle when they are trying to step in the world of uh, um, deep sky astrophotography. I, I totally feel that. Yeah. Um, and I, I've talked to a few people online about how I got started and how they can get started. And I will always tell people reuse and repurpose what you already have as far as camera and lenses are concerned because you don't need a telescope to really shoot these objects. You need at minimum 100 millimeters of focal length and that's it. If you have a lens that can go to 100 millimeters focal length, you can take most of these photos. Um, and if anyone is going to invest their money on uh, as far as you know, buying stuff would be, I would say the mount. 
um, I would say, you know, invest your money in a mount and not a telescope because there are many substitutes for the form and function of a telescope, but there is hardly a substitute for a decent mount. Um, because if you don't have a decent mount, then you're going to end up tossing a lot of your data, whether it's star trails or, you know, fainter targets, you're going to have time shooting. You're going to have a hard time shooting because you can't expose your shot as long as you want because your mount cannot accurately track, say, maybe more than four or five minutes. And some of these, some of these pictures, they took a little bit longer than four minutes. Um, so I recommend anyone starting this hobby that number one, first of all, reuse whatever you can optically. And number two, if you're going to spend your money, spend your money on a mount. And, you know, there's always the allure of buying the next um, telescope storage. But, <laughs> but, one, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, I, and also, and, and sorry, Joe, to put you on the spot, but you've also shown that you can great, you can get great results with just camera lenses. Um, yeah. so I do have a question for you. Yeah. If, uh, uh I, I'd be interested in seeing what the, like so, my biggest question is how how much effect does the like you know having uh, I guess the modification of your sensor uh, uh, how much does that affect the, the how you pick up the reds in your in your pictures? Oh, and I'd be interested in seeing like the raw files of like some of the things that you shot compared to some of the stuff that I shot because like I I just so I I, I took my like crack of veil last night I, after you talking about like it's like one of the hardest things you ever shot. I shot it, but like I couldn't see a single thing in my raw images, and it really took that extra step of like going through pro post to be able to see anything. It is, it is, because um, I refuse to call it the Veil Nebula. I'm going to call it the Peta Nebula from now on. So, um, because Peta is it's extremely faint, and most of that faintness is really the red hydrogen and stock camera they're not that good at picking up the hydrogen alpha wavelength. And I can show you a picture. The, this Lagoon Nebula, it was taken with a bone stock DSLR. And I know that this picture was also impacted by my, you know, my lack of skills at the time, but you can already start to see that I'm picking up mostly, I'm picking up blues, I'm picking up whites, but I'm not really picking up hydrogen alpha. I'm not really picking up the red. And if I am picking up the red, it looks sort of pinkish. Mm. And you compare that to Orion. Yeah, I'm picking up the white, but it, when it's, when it's, and you can also sort of see like the transition from the white to sort of faint hydrogen red to really, really red. I would imagine if I had if I use my stock camera to take um, to take Orion, then I don't think I would be able to pick up the outer edges of the flame. If I could, I would pick up very faint, you know, just barely any. Um, also, it would be a good a good comparison would be to compare California with the same filter between stock. And, uh, and hydrogen alpha modified. Um, by the way, that's another thing I want to say. Um, if you want to save some money, modify your own camera. It's, it's do it yourself. It's, it's, I know it sounds scary, um, but if you, if, you, if you realize that when you take apart a camera, first of all, they're actually really well designed. So if, you gonna, if you're going to break something, you really have to try to break something. The, the only thing that I would, the only hazardous part would be, you know, getting dirt on your filter. Um, 
uh, I'm sorry, getting thrown on, on your sensor. So, you know, you can, because the, the cost of, George, you know this, we, we were talking about this earlier, the cost of sending in your camera to be modified is as much as buying the camera. But the cost of buying that filter use to modify. Use camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so this is, yeah, but you know, I I modified my camera for ninety dollars, and that was just for the filter, and that was it. Mm. So there are ways to save money in this hobby, and you know, this hobby is really expensive. I'm sure most of you know by now, but there are ways to go around it, um, and yeah, I I do recommend everyone modifying their camera. Or at, or or going with a dedicated camera because you're 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 simply going to pick up a lot more signal. Um, and that's all I have to say about cameras. Unless anyone else have a uh, have questions, I'm also happy to answer them. Um, it still sounds scary, but it, it's, it's it's more doable right now. It's <laughs> it doable. Like more doable. Yeah. It's 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 absolutely doable. My my advice is to clear whatever bench that you're working on i like i did it on my coffee table in my living room so and then i what i did was i had i had a bunch of uh soy sauce dishes i don't know if they're soy sauce dishes but they're just you know small tiny dishes and i label them so that i know exactly what screw came from which region of the camera but then i know how to put it back together mm. and then when you take off your sensor make sure that you know you take it off and you work on it and then you know you put it in the bag and then uh it's 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 in general it's better to it's better for the silicone that you will use to sort of glue the replacement filter on and let that dry overnight um so be prepared that whatever bench that you're working on coffee table or tabletop or whatnot you're not going to have access to that bench for the night um, and just organize your things. Um, and, um, yes, it is nerve wracking. It is nerve wracking. I, I, my friend Michael knows this. I, I, I work on my car often. And, um, and before you say anything, Michael, my cars work, they all work. They don't break all the time. Um, and taking apart the camera was more nerve wracking than working on my cars. I will say that. <laughs> really? It, oh, it was. It was because my first time doing it, I was like, "Man, it's so tiny!" Like, you know, what if I what if I lose a screw? What if I drop something? Or what if I snap a, a cable or something? Right? And then be very careful when you're handling the sensor because if you get dust on it, and it happened to me, I had I had to take my camera apart the second time and redo it. Because I had I had a speck of dust on my sensor when I put it back together, and then when I took a picture of it, I saw a little shadow, and I was like, "Oh my god, I got to take it apart again." So I know that most of us won't have a clean room to work in. So when you're, when I guess when you get to the point where you're taking where you're working with the sensor itself. I guess try not to breathe on it. I, I don't know how you would do that, but you know, try not to breathe on it. Uh, cover your face, but if you cover your face and you can't see anything, um, I don't know. Tie up your hair. I, I don't know. Just just be just be extremely careful by the time you get to the sensor, um, because if you're not, you will have to take it apart again. So, so Angus, in, in the camera body that you worked on, is it? Was it before and after, or just after? Is the sensor fully enclosed? See, like on my camera, it's it's a magnetic mount. It just floats. It's open. It can get stuff on it, and I just hold it upside down with my bulb and and, and blow. But it sounds like once you put your final thing together, it's it's completely inaccessible with blown air. I want to make sure I understand your question. But the, are you asking if the sensor that I worked on? If it's held, if it's held in by screws, or if it's held in by, no, if it's if it's enclosed, like with some the <clears throat> filter plate over it, like you couldn't blow off any, any. Uh, oh uh, yeah, yeah, 
It is. It is. It isn't close. Okay. It isn't close. Um, but you know, to change the filter, you will expose it to. Yeah. Okay. And that, and that that part is that part is terrifying. Yeah. The, just in my camera, the the lens, the uh, the lens, I did the the uh, sensor is always exposed. Oh. So, yeah. That's terrifying. No, you just you take a lens off, you hold it upside down, you don't get dust on it. If you do, you just blow it off. It's it's actually oh. pretty good, but. Uh, Oh, well, so, well, I guess it's the same as, as getting dust on those sensor, but uh, I use, I'm using a DSLR, so I have a mirror in front of it, but I guess if you have dust on a mirror, then it's the same as having dust on the uh, Okay, so, you know what, I'm using mirrorless, and I just, I've never actually owned a DSLR, so. Oh, fancy. The way Canon makes their cameras, their DSLRs, the sensor is on top, below the viewfinder. Yeah. And there's a movable mirror, or rather... Right. Yeah. Um, Exposes it. Well, <laughs> the, the camera that I bought was cheap um, because I didn't know what I was doing, so I didn't want to take apart my one and only camera. So I bought a second camera for like I think it was like one hundred and fifty dollars. Nice. So that was that was my that was my experiment, um, and now I'm using it. So. Um, so that that I think takes care of my second question. So you don't have any plans to uh, use that second camera that you've modified now for uh, regular photography, right? So I actually came in here with zero photography experience. And I have very little interest in daytime regular photography. Um, I think it's because I lack the patience to quote unquote wait for the right moment George, I saw your hand up, but see, with Nebula, galaxies, and deep sky objects, they're always up there. You got your fog, you got your light pollution, you got yeah, well, everything yeah. else. Yeah, but then, but they're but they're always there. I don't need to wait for like you know the right moment, like you know, like 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 in sports journalism, I don't need to wait for like the victory pose to take a picture. You should listen like, to how you just gave a lecture on how hard things were. <laughs> You know, yeah, that's why I'm laughing so hard. Yeah, and then that's why that's why I'm I, that's why I'm not a photographer. I I I know next to nothing about cameras. Um, I when I started this, I didn't even know what focal lengths were. So uh, I just knew that oh, so something something millimeters. I don't know what that means, but um, and I knew that some camera some lenses they they zoom in and. Some doesn't. Some are called prime lens. I don't. I don't know what that was. So, um, I bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, I I know nothing about regular photography. <laughs> um, it's it's really just these deep sky objects that attracts me to make me want to learn everything that it takes to. Just get a glimpse of them. Um, yeah. Great. Uh, very, very beautiful work. Thank you very much, Angus. And I have a question you. for you. Yes. Uh, what's the f stop or the aperture of your lens that you use? Okay. Yeah. So um, most of these pictures that you see are taken, are, are, they, were, they were taken with my uh, William Mothic's. Uh, Spacecast 51. So the oh, diameter, I see, I see. yeah. So the, the the diameter would be 51 millimeters, of course, um, and the focal length at 250 millimeters, and the uh, f-stop is, I believe, 4.9. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the only pictures that are not taken with the uh, Spacecat would be uh, the galaxy, the bird. The smile, the broom, and everything else was the fifty-one. But then, but for the galaxy, the bird, the smile, and the broom, they were taken with the William Optics uh, Zenith Star seventy-three. So that is seventy-three millimeters in diameter, uh, four thirty millimeters uh, focal length, uh, f-stop at five point nine. Okay. 
Uh, great. So, all right. Who wants to <coughs> wants to be host next? Um, I can do next for for can my I stop um, you? Let me <laughs> stupid stop. question. Okay. Thanks for your time, everyone. Thank you, Angus. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, Angus, you got really very informative, and I I definitely feel that a lot of like feelings that I got the same is just same feeling, the same struggle. I I think what I've shown you was more struggle than anything else. <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, well, that, that was a great story of how you came from from basically knowing nothing of photography and astronomy to, to shooting all this stuff. That's, well, that's, great. that's great for our members to hear because many of them may be beginners at either or at all of it. Well, I, I, I did have some experience as a visual observer, but I, I hated looking through an eyepiece. Um, and I actually used to work in a lab as well, and I, I hated looking through a microscope. So there's something about looking through an eyepiece that I just hate. Oh, okay. so, um, so I quit being a visual observer a long time ago. Um, so I am actually really happy. And I think this is why I'm so invested in natural photography, because I, I love science. Uh, my background is in science. And I'm sorry about whoever's going, is going next. I'm going over time. But... Astrophotography has given me an avenue to reconnect with astronomy, you know, and that's and that's why I, I, I feel really passionate about this stuff. Um, but my wallet doesn't, so that's a problem. All right. Yeah, the space guy and the senior star are pretty inexpensive for what they do. I think it's I, I, love that, I love that the senior stars on the on the 61 and 73 millimeter variety are, are below $600. That's affordable. You know, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but have you guys heard of the brand Astrotech? Yeah. So Astrotech and William Moffick Scene of Star 61, they're actually identical. They're the same optical tube. The only difference between William Moffick and Natural and Natural Tech is that William Moffick, they have their own sort of like ecosystem of, of accessory, but optically and performance wise, they're identical. That's great. And yeah, and so and also at the Astrotech, and you can find one that is. Yeah. They're only three hundred and like three hundred and seventy dollars. So, if you don't care much about branding, yeah, I would go for Astrotech. But um, they're actually extremely popular, um, and I've seen on the used market like there people are basically selling them for brand new prices. Uh, does it yeah. have the uh, the same fluoride? Uh, yeah, it's it, they're 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 identical. Uh, Astrotech and William Moffick Scenic Star, they both use FPL fifty three. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the big ups on William Moffick is that they do have better accessories. I will say that the the add on that they have on the scope, it is better. But if you're talking about the pure optical performance. And the, the pure mechanism of the tube, they're identical. They're actually, yeah, they're actually both rebranded by an OEM manufacturer called Sharpstar. Yeah, so they're, they're essentially the variant of the same tube. Um, so if you can get your hands on an Astrotech, I will get your hands on an Astrotech. <laughs> Great. So Lincoln, are you ready? 
Uh, I'm sorry, you're talking to me. Yeah, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Looking Good. forward to it. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how the, the whole share screen things work. Okay. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Oh, great. <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm going to start here. So I started to um, take photos of the night sky um, way before I joined SFAA. And I kind of started the wide field a long time ago before realizing that I can do the deep sky objects with uh, um, 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 normal DSLR lenses. Uh, that I don't have to invest in a, a heavy, like a very expensive telescopes. So this is my very first um, Milky Way photos that that I got around probably three to four years ago. And before that, I it, it, it's just bad. You can, you can see all the noises around here and all the stuff. I didn't know anything about astrophotography before and i i try to do it because i because i see there's so many instagram photographers that are just posting everything everything right there with the uh, like gorgeous milky ways and i learned this is the the pigeon point lighthouse it's just like a um probably an hour driving down from san francisco i was like i can do it too i mean I'm, I'm going to go there. It's like, I just went there and, and I went there. And the first night I went there is, um, it's foggy. I didn't realize I need a clear sky for, for astrophotography. And it was like two hours drive. It's, it's foggy. I was like, okay. I, so I, I can't get there. So I went home and another, another one hour drive. So, um, then a few few weeks later, I realized that there's a, a clear sky. I was like, okay, clear sky. I'm going to go there again. And it was foggy again. It's, it's like a late summer and, you know, by the ocean, it's, it's always foggy. Even if the, the, like, uh, the uh, prediction is clear, it's, it's just like foggy. It's uh, all like this around the whole Bay Area, West Coast, like a, a Pacifica and a Big Sur and stuff. So I was like, okay, why is this foggy again? <laughs> so I was just, I, I took another drive. The third time, um, it's under a full moon. I don't know, I need to, I don't know, I, I need to be a moonless night to take photos of the Milky Way. <laughs> when there I saw a moon, it's like, okay, there's moon, where's the Milky Way? Hey, Lincoln, uh, when did you say this was around the time? Uh, probably three, four years ago. Okay, so I just want to say that it wasn't me buying stuff. That's why, <laughs> that's why you had cloudy nights, so. Okay. But... Yeah, right. Yeah, and and I, I, I just don't know. I, I don't know where to start. And because I, I have no friends doing that, and I don't I, I don't know any local groups doing that, and you know the the time I found a lot of like um, Instagram photographers, they're hesitating to giving out tips. They're kind of like keeping themselves secret. I, I don't know why. You should probably join a different group then. <laughs> yeah, right. like I know it's it's uh, it's so weird. They're like sharing. They're like helping beginners. Yeah, I right. run a I run a group called Bay Area Photography Club, and we have a lot of sharing in there. But the problem is, people tend to start uh, like go to my group, and then they migrate to Bay Area Street Photography Group, and then like <laughs> they stop coming back. <laughs> That's so bad. Right. So yeah, I I it's it's after um, a few months that I decided to uh, give it a fourth try and. I just went there. I saw a lot of people just sitting, sitting around the lighthouse. I was wondering what they're doing until I saw the 
the the DSLR screens at night are flashing. I was like, holy shit, that's it. <laughs> I just put my camera right there and um, I, I aligned it um, to the lighthouse and I set a 30 second exposure and I uh, just hit my remote. I was like, boom. And there's all the, like the Milky Way is right there. I, I couldn't see the Milky Way at that time because I, I don't know I need my, so like my, my eyes need to adapt to the darkness and all this stuff. So I just like went off my phone and went on my car and just set up all the cameras and stuff and, and took a photo. And, it, and I saw the Milky Way is right there. I was, it, I was mind blown. I don't know it's right, right there until I took the photo. So this is all the thing started. And I started to go around a lot of places to try to take photos. And, and that's the point I got more and more confident. And um, the next photo is, uh, this is taken at, I think it's Big Sur. Yeah, so after I got confidence looking for the Milky Way and I know it's there and I know it's a, a, a new moon and I just went there, I took a lot of photos and, and, and just went back home. But then I realized that why is my foreground so black? I don't know I need some artificial or the moon like to like to lit up my foreground and and all my foregrounds were were boring at that time and so this is taken the moment before the sunrise you can see the the um the sky is getting bright it's not that dark as uh, as we can see at the normal like probably 3 a.m 4 a.m this is around I think five to six, just before the sun um, goes up. And I try to do more um, trips. I think this is around Lake Tahoe. And I've learned to use artificial lights at that time. So I just parked my car in front hey, of- Hey, uh, Lincoln, are you, ch I, I don't know if everybody's seen this. I only see the, the, the lighthouse. I wonder- oh, the lighthouse, wait, 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 hold on. I think the, okay, I'm trying to switch this to this frame. Can you see it? All right, give me one second. Are you, are you on multiple screens? So you are. I see PowerPoint, by the way. There okay. it is. Can you see there it is. Okay, okay, okay. So what, one thing before you continue. Somebody asked what processing software and steps did you use on your photos? Uh, I'm sorry, for, uh, what is that again? Somebody asked. Um, if you can share your processing software and steps. Oh, I'm just using the, the uh, Lightroom. <laughs> it's just Lightroom. Wow, and way to, uh, way, way, way to put, a, put us all to shame, man. It, <laughs> I know it's, it's, um, it's uh, uh, for, for wide field, um, you don't need those fancy software to stacks. It's, a, it's just a single frame. You put it there in 30 seconds and that's it. And I think I'm really amazed at how well lit everything is. I think it's amazing. Because usually, like, either the sky will be too bright and the ground will be too dark, or, or I guess it could be the other way around, and, and I just don't have good balance between the sky and the, and the ground. Yeah, but right. with the light, lighthouse photo, it looked well balanced. It, the, the lighthouse is pretty – I got pretty lucky there because uh, um, there's a car driving by, and the headlight just, like – a flash through the, the, the body of the, of the lighthouse. And it's, this is lit up like that. And I can see a lot of people at that they're time, they're the using their uh, um, flashlights to paint it. Don't turn on your mic. And yeah, this is the, the, the dark foreground I talked about. Um, I, I took this photo at Big Sur. And my photo at that time was super boring because I, I don't realize that I need artificial lights. And this is when I learned to use some light at the foreground. And this is around Lake Tahoe. I just parked my car in front of a, um, um, some parking lots and just got off and took a photo and I found this pretty good balance. So I just keep it. And this is to a point where, where all the strange things started to happen to me. It was like a 
three in the middle of the night, and I was there alone <laughs> with a tripod and a camera, and and my car is not beside me. And I know if, if anything happened, I have to run into my car. And I hear a bell, <laughs> just a bell, just ringing, a, a very small bell. It's like ring, and. And it kind of ring and just running around me. I don't know what that bear. Is. I I I totally honestly I I I have no idea what that is. Wow. It's it's around Lake Tahoe. You probably had uh, either somebody tagged a wildcat and put a bell on it, which is funny, right? Uh, or you had an actual cat <laughs> out in the field found you. Yeah, it, it could be it could some of cats got, got lost and just tried wandering around. Just, you know, feral cats or <laughs> yeah. cats, you know, sight at night. That's the first because moment I feel, holy crap, I might thing. do something wrong. Uh, hunting and, and any other animal like uh, badgers and everything else will not get a bill on it or let's you know, have you know somebody in the neighborhood is funny yeah right i i mean i don't know why they put bells on wild animals but it it could well, be somebody's pet particularly would it have to be somebody with a sixth sense of humor right right yeah the rangers put radio transmitters on cats and bears oh that's that's interesting but with a with a bear uh, with, with a bell, bell on a bear, bear how do they animal, catch don't get any <laughs> tagging unless they're big Oh, I see. Okay. Thanks for the info. Uh, researcher. Oh, great. I mean, I, I finally know what's happening until today when I share this photo. It's probably a, a cat in the neighborhood, a feral, either a feral cat or a cat that's let out at night. With okay. Bear. They typically okay. Have cats. All right. <laughs> and they will definitely walk around you. <laughs> okay. All right. So, yeah, this is... Uh, when I learned to use, I, I don't know what this light is like. I don't know what's happening in this photo, but it was on Mount Tam and it's not very dark at that night. And um, I think the, the light on the foreground is caused by the glow of the city behind. And yeah, that's the, I, I, I just, started to learn how to use different lights for the foreground. And I think I'm pretty confident to plan out the whole thing um, after I, I, I got a plan of where to travel and what time do I need to be there? And what am I gonna use for um, what the approximate framing of the photo, where, where the Milky Way is gonna be um, and what's gonna be in front and if, if it is going to be uh, lit up by the moon or I'm going to uh, use a flashlight to, to light it up. And I think the, the bright thing on this photo is it is the moon. I think it's the moon. It's, you mean the, uh, one, the one lower yeah, down towards the horizon? Yeah, that's the moon. <laughs> wow. I think I saw an yeah, I saw it. I got a different photo that I can see Andromeda, but, but I didn't have it here. Okay. Was the moon full at that time, or was that a uh, partial? It's a it's a members' night. Oh, it's a it's a it's a public night, so I think it's partial. Okay. Yeah. So that's. Oh, you remember this night? I think all of us just got to the USS Hornet to enjoy the um um. Um, uh, observation night. Um, I just put a put my camera right there, and I did a time lapse. And um, the, the the foreground is lit by so many artificial lights, and you can see all the star trails going by. I, I I'm actually surprised by how bright the sky was uh, with all the artificial lights going on. And there are so many trails of the planes taking off. You can see there, uh, this is probably the Oakland International Airport around the distance of the lower left side. So the planes just like taking off there and just flying above the USS Hornet. And 
I'm surprised that the star the stars are that bright at that night. Oh, um, that's a full moon event. I remember. Okay. Uh, I, I I have PTSD from seeing star traps. <laughs> <laughs> but this is like in this context, I think it looks amazing. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, the star trails and and. But plane trails if it appears in in one of your frame right and this is yeah. um our sfa trip to lake observatory i remember and i remember all of us just like listening um the explanation of the all these amazing telescopes and i tried to snap a photo um just uh with my with my cameras hanging on the back I think this is around 20 seconds exposure and it was all red. So people are holding red lights. So the whole thing appears to be red. And I try to reduce the, the uh, saturation of the red channel. So it appears to be like grayish and a sky red there. Great job. Thanks. And that's when things started to happen. Um, I traveled to Big Sur. I was like more and more confident I can got anything. I just go out at night and I was just driving back and forth until I hit a deer at that time. Were you were you were you were you aiming for the Veil Nebula that night? Yeah. I I I don't know. I, I don't remember anything. <laughs> I don't remember anything. I, I don't remember what I like what I was looking for and What's my plan? I just remember I, I hit a deer when I when I went back. It, it's it's a disaster to me. And that's a oh that's another shot. It's it's from that night. So I didn't I didn't even export it. I just like keep it in the in my camera. I think that's it. I'm I'm pretty sad. There there's some <laughs> there are always some sad stories. Um, while doing all the things, I was like. No, I'm. I'm not gonna edit that photo. I'm gonna just keep it in my camera, and that's gonna be it. So yeah. Oh, by the way, this is Pixar, and I I got really really clear Milky Way at Pixar because that that spot is just super dark, and I think it's even darker than at Yosemite because Yosemite got um. You know, a, a little village down there, and sometimes there's just like uh, blowing around, and Tahoe is just a a city. Tahoe is just just a city, and Big Sur is just Big Sur is in the middle of nowhere. I, yeah, yeah. There's and there's no major cities in between. You are basically riding Route One between right. two different communities, and there's right. no for miles and uh the mountains themselves i mean you're you're on the edge of the uh practically a big mountain oh yeah i know and you're talking. facing the water to see the milky way too right so the nearest down is be on the other side on the other side of the slope yeah yeah so it's only one or two miles but it's blocked by the mountain oh that's nice i i, I know um we and got uh the water but it's uh Many miles away. That's nice, but it, yes, it is long drive, right? Yeah. I know we got um star party at the uh, um uh, at Yosemite, but I haven't got a chance to be there. I I assume it's just gonna be super amazing, but when when I try to be there, it's always the fire, and <laughs> all the things just yeah, that, all that's blocking my stuff. The last few years have been bad. We haven't it's either fire season there's a fire in the park itself oh okay uh, uh the times where there was no fire they had to cancel because the the sewer backed up with the campsite that they assigned to us and another time i forget uh the park opened there late so it was we got our spot in the the regis assigned us the date, so we don't have a choice. Oh, okay. There's a, lottery, there's a lottery for, so basically all of the astronomy clubs in the state are invited. 
Oh, nice. But which weekend we get? Each club gets a different weekend. Nice. That's which interesting. It's my lottery. So they basically <laughs> pull Okay. So the, one time we got our spot in early June, but the park hadn't opened. There was still snow in some of the parts of the park. Oh. They hadn't opened one of the main roads. And until they, uh, until the, uh, I think it's yoga uh, opens, uh, visitors can come into the park, but there's less. Uh, that's numbers. It's 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 not a, it's not fully open. I see. I see. Yeah, I remember. I remember when there's finally I can align my time with the SFAA trip to the Yosemite. It just got canceled because of the fire. I remember yeah. at that time. Yeah, July is bad. It, it, we've been lucky only once or twice. Oh. Okay. Six years. All right. And I wish, I wish we could. Yes, I wish we could reserve, like, late August every year. Oh, that's great. So that I wish we could, but we get it because of the lottery, but you can. Yeah, yeah, right. All right. So this is the bear the... that was, that was TCU at, at Tahoe. Uh, I'm sorry. Is this the bear that was teasing you at Tahoe? Yeah, right. How I'm? How do you remember that? How, <laughs> how do you know that? It's, yeah, <laughs> I, I, um, this is a, a night when I walked out of a restaurant and, um, I was sort of by myself. And before going to Tahoe, I started to realize all different things. I started to realize the danger that if I'm taking photos outside alone, I may have something, yeah, that is watching me. So, I, I just do research. I started to do research. And I noticed there are a lot of bears at Tahoe at Yosemite. So I was like, damn, how do I, how do I, what can I do with, when I see bears? And I, I, I noticed I can carry a bear spray. So I just went to buy a bear spray. And after arriving at Tahoe, I just parked my car in the parking lot and I just walked to a restaurant nearby with the bear spray in my car. And after walking out of the restaurant, I was just like walking with my eyes on the phone. And I, I hear someone was yelling, stop, stop, stop. It's like, what the hell is going on? And I just raised my head and the bear is standing right in front of me, staring at me. And I was staring at a bear and the bear is staring at me. And I, I totally, I was totally got scared i don't know what to do at that time and i i started to think i'm a bear a bear is in front of me i have a i have a bear spray the bear spray is in my car <laughs> and i i started to staring at the bear and i i know the bear is probably not looking for me and because there, there are some people around, like probably uh, 30 or 20 meters away. And I started to slowly just stepping back. And hopefully the bird would not charge me. And after I bet like 10, 20 meters, I, I tried to hide behind a wall. And the bird just finally just lost interest to me. And... It started to um, go to, like, it started to look for something in the garbage can. So I just took out my uh, um, my camera. I'm surprised I have I have cameras on me all the time, but I don't have the bear spray. So I took this picture at uh, 500 millimeter, and uh, he's standing in front of uh, on the top of a fence. On, on and, and there's a very tall tree behind a bear. And there's so many people. So more and more people just started to walk out and try to watch the bear because they, I don't know, I haven't seen a bear that close. I'm, I'm not sure if they're surprised too. And they're sort of pushing the bear in the corner. And I was like, no, this is not good. What if the bear has got 
he got nowhere to go. And finally, the bear started to climb on the tree. I never know the bear can climb on the tree that fast until I saw it. And just climb on the tree and just run away. This is my, um, I don't know, scary moment or maybe close encounters. <laughs> <laughs> close encounter. I don't know. It it makes some emotions of that. Yeah, the closest I've gotten to wildlife is a raccoon. This is really something else. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just a really big dog. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> really big dog with scary claws. Yeah. I don't know. Look at the claws. So I, I, I finally realized that the the there's something um coming with it when you're trying to just drive around alone and trying to take photos in the middle of the night at at some places in the middle of nowhere. So I was like, no, I, I can't do that. I probably can't do that. And I need to find a group. That's how I joined SFAA and started to like taking photos with you together. Yeah. And I remember when once we we're on Mount Tam, there are um, there are coyotes around. There's just yeah. like so many coyotes, we can hear it. So yeah, this is my first attempt of Andromeda, um, um, using my. I, I don't have a. Um, a tracker at that time. So I was just like a purely tripod and my camera with a, with a telephoto lens. I did this with three second ex exposure uh, for probably one hour or two hour. And I got a few thousands of frames. When I try to stack it, the, the software just, they, they just gave up working. I was so upset and I, I was like, how, how can I get a good photo of it? I just got all the frames and, and my software just refused to work. And after I got a tracker, I can get um, much longer exposure. And this is the, first, the second try of the Andromeda. It's, uh, I, I don't know how to control noise at that time. So I was just like crank it up to 2000 ISO and just take a 30 second or maybe 45 second uh, exposure and, and just call it. I'm really glad I showed my Andromeda first and not <laughs> after yours because yours looks so much better. No, it's, it's actually, uh, do you have a, do you have a filter on? I did have yeah I I did have a filter on uh, I was using the uh, the Idas LPS D two oh okay um, I'll, I'll 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 type it in the chat so you can so you know what it is uh, when you're done presenting because I know you can't see it right yeah now. great um but I actually I may have I think I made a post about the difference between D one and D two on Andromeda um. Was this was this with filter or no filter? It is a no filter. I had yeah. with, uh, all the filters yeah. on it. Yeah, this has got to go somewhere dark. I'm I'm really glad I show mine first because I can't follow this. No, no, no. It, this is on Mount Ten. This is just on Mount Ten, and it's a uh, uh, probably one minute per frame. I think it looks amazing. It, it's it's. I got a 500 millimeter and I, I, I got a full frame camera. I cropped it a little bit and I, I'm pretty amazed. I can see all the details of the arms, but oh the, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. pretty dissatisfied of the noise though. And I'll probably try it again. Like sometime with it's, the, yeah. To me, when I look at this picture is it's the arms and the darker clouds within the, the spiral that really makes me envious of your picture. <laughs> yeah, that I, I have, I literally have no idea how I got, how I captured those, but yeah, think, that's, yeah. That's, that's really sure the sharpness. So those are called ab absorption nebula. Those are, uh, it's really impressive just how dark they are in comparison. Just it's crisp. It looks good. 
Yeah. Interesting. If you don't mind me asking, by the way, on Mount Tam, were you inside the gates of the park or outside? Oh, uh, I'm at the like just where we nor normally observe. I, I've I've never I've never been with the with the club on Mount Tam, so I've I I, I don't know where that is. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's inside the gate, and I think a few minutes drive after after we pass the gate. Yeah. Okay. So then you 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 guys got kind of special dispensation to be up there after hours. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, we request specific nights, so we don't just have a pass unless it's go anytime. We yeah. request specific nights uh, every year now for with COVID. They let us know when they're capable. Sure. So we cannot started January as we hoped. So at some point in the 2021, they'll, they'll let us know that we can and then we'll request uh, a few Saturdays just for members. Yeah. Member yeah, during uh, when Neo, Neo Wise was appearing uh, for two, two different nights. Uh, once I was at West Peak, once I was at East Peak and you know, they come around with their bullhorns saying, all right, you got to get out. And yeah. they were pretty, they were actually pretty cool, but uh, I'm just glad I didn't get ticketed or towed or anything. Yeah, you get a citation if they see you twice after they say that. <laughs> if you see you again and you haven't left or if they catch you somewhere else in the park after they told you, hmm. uh, you yeah. get a citation. You only get to know if your car is still up there in the morning. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Uh, okay. But then, uh, like, if you're still in your car or near your car, you won't get it towed. They'll, they will go with you on you, but you still get a cit citation. And I believe it's, I forget, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. It's only a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. Pay for, for a good photo. astro photo. I can see a photographer going, oh, that's not that expensive. Yeah, that's yeah, it is. Working out, working out the math. Yeah, it is. You, 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 you know, if you, it's free if you hike in. True. If you have no car and they find you, you can hide in the trees every time they find your car. <laughs> and you can even use you can even shoot from the trees. That's true. I remember a night where I don't, on I don't want to anybody to try to get in there. <laughs> I remember where uh, uh, there's a night where on Mount Tam having a star party. There's a there's a guy called Lost. I his whole family is looking for him and and he uh, they just called the police I, I don't i don't remember what night it was but yeah yeah it's I pretty scary that. yeah i do remember that too yeah they were hiking yeah. They, it's very easy to get lost like, up there it's like yeah. six seven trails so you don't if you take the another yeah. trail by mistake you're gonna be separated from your group and you don't know where you are they, they don't know where you are Right, right. Oh, does he have a map with you to get you back to Bujak or Pantol or to another trailhead? Yeah, but the thing is, like, in the dark, all the trails look the same. And, sure, you know, sure. <laughs> and, and, you know, they're the landmarks to tell where you are to get you back to where you want to go are gone. The best I I spent a it. lot of time hiking and, and camping. I once spent a week, this is years ago, I spent a whole week up there. And I mean, I know the trails. I would not try it in the dark. <laughs> yeah. The best you can do is if a compass heads south, you'll hit the road at uh, Panoramic Highway. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> you, you get a lot of poison oak too. And then you, you follow your trail, but make sure that the, you're trending south as as much as possible. And eventually you hit Panoramic Highway. You, you'll either end up near Bootjack or some oh. maybe the, uh, mountain road in, mountain, mountain home in. That's interesting. <laughs> or, uh, uh, but if you go east or west, I don't know what roads there are. And don't go west. Don't. <laughs> you can, if you go west, you'll get to Bolinas uh, road. You'll probably walk off a cliff if you go west. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, stay on the trail. Stay on the trail. I didn't mean I didn't mean walk south. Yeah. No. Now, if you go west, you'll probably you'll you'll end up at uh, at Highway One at some point, or uh, uh, 
What's the one that goes by down through Steep Ravine? Is that is that the east side of Panoramic? I think that's the uh, a part of Panoramic and also Molinas Road. Molinas Road goes north south, but it's at the very west of the park. Yeah, it's the first road. It's the first road that are directly west. Great. But the problem with uh, you know definitely do it, but uh, on our on our trail, don't go up trail, <laughs> <laughs> or else you will walk fuck left. That's when you get the Follow poison. Your trail and uh, try to tread e tread west as much as you can, and you'll end up on Bolinas Road. Then you can follow that south. Once you get once you're on the road, head south to until you hit panoramic again. Great. And then if you're up on, once you're in panoramic, walk east, and you'll hit the you get to the gate at the extreme west of the park. Wow. That's a that's a big park. I've, I've done that, yeah, I've done that uh, looking for Bolinas, not Bolinas, sorry, uh, there's a, a lake uh, west of downtown. And I went on the trail trying to find it, but it wasn't the correct trail. And I ended up on Bolinas Road. Oh, I didn't okay. feel like hiking up the mountain again because I was tired. It's, it's super tired. Bolinas, yeah. Bolinas Road until I hit panoramic. And it was easier to walk uphill on the road than on the trail. That's crazy. I'm surprised you walk, walk around and walk through the whole park. That was a two hour walk <laughs> from Danger. Bolinas Road <laughs> to, to the parking lot at, at uh, uh, <laughs> the parking lot at, at uh, where SFAA has its space at star parties. Right. Didn't eat any cats or anything? Uh, I I saw deer and other stuff, but the cats stay on the uh, on the mountain itself. Uh, I've seen them on the road on Panoramic, heading into the park. Yeah. Yep. Uh, at night, but they're, uh, I've never seen them during the day. All right, um, I'm gonna head for the next slide. Okay. Okay. Um, this is after I learned how to control my noise. Um, I, I I've learned that if you um, if you're to stay at the optimus um, like uh, the optimum ISO of your camera, they uh they listed um like uh, most of the cameras online with the with the optimal ISO that can keep all the data. It's not showing very bright in the picture, but on that way you can keep all the data with the lowest noise possible and you can just stack them together in the software and just bring out the details later. And this is also taken on uh, Mount Tam. I think it's probably 30 seconds per frame. And the the, the thing is so bright and I got very like um, satisfying results just after 30 seconds. So I just decided to stack it. I should have reduced the noise a little, uh, I reduced the ISO a little bit and pushed for probably a minute exposure. But um, given the wind at that time, I decided to just like a found a balance and I see the brightness is good enough and the noise is pretty acceptable. And I'll just keep it there with the 30 seconds. I don't want to have any uh, like a more wobbling in star trails if, uh, if the wind just like hitting the camera. And you can see there's uh, the, the stars uh, uh, are not very round in the picture. There's so many like a small, very, very small tail on the tip of the star. I think that's probably because uh, some of the frames I got, um, the camera was got blown by the wind a little bit. And when it got stacked, it just like uh, the information just left there. What was your focal length in the shot? Uh, this is also 500 with the tiny, tiny bit of crop. I say yeah. Yeah. probably 600. What um, full frame? You... Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, full frame camera, Nikon. Yeah, yeah, full frame. 
Can I ask you what mail you were using? Uh, the I Optron is that brand? Uh, Sky Guider Pro. Yeah, so that's very similar to the Skywatcher uh, right. Star Adventure. So what I've noticed is that with mounts, um, I don't know if this is true. This is just my observation that the more focal length you have, the deeper you're going into the sky, right? Yeah. And so therefore, your your whatever object you're looking at, it's, it's therefore magnified. But because right. it is it is more magnified you're also magnifying the small errors in tracking. Right, because, you're correct. Yeah, so I think maybe that's why you're seeing some of the like longer stars at 500 millimeters. Um, I have a feeling that if this was like 200, 250, under the same weather conditions, you may not have seen any star trails because at that point the stars would be that much smaller. You, you, they would just be dots. But, it is. It is. I, I don't know about you, but this looks pretty good to me. So, um, it's, I, I have. I don't even see the star trials. You, you, you see it because because Lincoln mentioned it. But yes. as a casual spectator, if you don't mention it, I probably won't even notice. Yeah. Uh, another another thing is like usually when you see it, uh, like usually when you just look at a sub, you see it. But then after you start doing your post uh, by blowing out some of the stars just a little bit, the trail kind of disappears. So you can't, you won't actually see it. <laughs> okay. But I love I love how you can just barely see the trapezium. It's like you you know if you play with the uh, the brightness a little bit, you may be able to. Thank you about. Was this under a moon by any chance? Uh, uh, moon? Yeah. Oh, this is, I think this is taken, um, it's, it's on Mount Tem, so it's either public night or members only like night. So if there's members only night, there's no moon. And if there's public <laughs> night, it could be a partial moon like mm -hmm. racing after. Sometimes, yeah. the, sometimes the moon sets early on public night, so and you have the rest of the night to take photos. But even then, I, it looks fantastic. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Once again, I'm glad I show mine first because I don't <laughs> want to follow this. It's uh. All right, I think I'll I'll just uh go for the next share, ne the next slide. I have one more. I have one question. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, we're getting it's ten fifty, almost ten thirty. Uh, oh. does, does anybody want to continue? Is there anybody else who wants to share? Because as long as people that want to see uh, photos and discuss how they're taken, um, I'm willing to let the talk continue. Yeah, I just got one more photo, and I'm, yeah, I'm, then, I'm yeah. Let's have Lincoln finish a photo first. Yeah, I mean, I'll let you finish. I'll say, I'll say, uh, is there anybody else? Sure. Okay, um, but if anybody's still interested in continuing after after Lincoln, I'll be happy to let the talk go on. All right. Um. So yeah, this is the photo I took with the um the. Uh, I think it's the UHC filter or, or, or something, the, the clip-in filter of the um, iOps long. The, they, uh, they basically got two filters, um, which is popular at that time. One is the general l Pro uh, for the light pollution. And another one is a, a little bit narrow band focused on the red side. I think it's UHC or something. And um, I think it took this photo at uh, the Lake Observatory, yeah, is Lake Observatory the the um, the platform out of the the parking lot, and um, I'm pretty surprised that because the location where the Lake Observatory at is um, just above the the big city of San Jose, and the, all the lights just shining 
up to the sky and um, with a lot of clouds at that night. And I just clipped the filter on and I snapped some photo. I realized it's, it's pretty good. So the, the filter is actually um, working beyond my expectation. And I have two, two filters. I got both the, um, the L Pro and the UHC. I had very bad luck with the L Pro because um, I had the glare. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that's the glare or something or, or it's misaligned. And um, I just simply got what I think is Angus got on his result. It's like half of the frame is like a, with a different color and I can correct it in pro, uh, post. So I just went ahead and go for the UHC. And uh, this is the area of, uh, you can see on the left, there's a, a, a North American nebula. And uh, I, 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 I don't know what nebula there is on the upper right, just upper right direction. There are three parts of it. I haven't got a time to look into it yet. I think if I'm looking at the, the top right corner, yeah. the bottom left corner of the top red part, I believe that is the butterfly oh. nebula. I, I, I think. I'm okay. I'm guessing. Um Well, I mean, it looks like a nebula. it looks like a butterfly, so Okay. <laughs> you know you know how I am with like naming nebula, so <laughs> yeah, so yeah, another problem I found is uh, some of the stars I got was all red. I'm not sure it's because of my post processing or, or because of my filter. There are uh, some with normal color, um, like white or maybe a little bit bluish, but there's so many red stars are so red right there. I'm not sure what's like going on. The, the brighter. The brighter stars tend to get whiter. I wonder if that's if that's because it is your filter. Because as the brighter the brighter stars will be able to push through more of their their whiteness, I believe. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's because of the the temperature of the star, uh, of the star, and they have a color themselves. But I'm not sure if my filter is actually blocking some of the the non red stars. So if I take off the filter, I probably get a lot more stars than that. But yeah. Um. That that could be one theory. Um, also, I I've had similar experience. You know, be just like when you get your picture, is it's there's a really overwhelmingly strong red hue, right. like you're like what you're describing. And I've used um, my very first light pollution filter it was called the SkyTech CLSCCD, and I hated that. Oh, because yeah, it blocked out it blocked out the uh, city lights. But it also introduced, it also introduced a ton of red everywhere. It basically, it basically made my image look like Jason's background. <laughs> um, and I returned it because maybe, maybe it doesn't work with my neighborhood, but I, I couldn't use it because there's only so much I can remove in post processing. So you're, uh, you're living in Sunset. I live. I live in the sunset. Yeah. Okay. I live in Data City. We so, probably we probably have very similar skies. Yes. I I took um um, let me see. I I took a. Uh, I'll grab grab you a photo real quick. I took a photo, um, just off my driveway with the uh, same filter as at Data City. Um. Oh, how do I switch the window that is sharing? You may have to stop share and reshare. Okay, I'll I'll um I'll get a I'll get a new slide real quick. While you're looking for that, by the way, I just looked it up. Uh, the Lick Observatory is in Bordeaux Class Four. It's a Class Four. Yeah. I mean, of course, if you're looking west, if you're looking west, you're going to look over San Jose. So, but yeah, right. But uh, uh, directly above, anyway, Zenith, Zenith uh, uh, Bortle is four. I see. Um, can you uh, see it right now? It's also the same part of the sky. Yep. Yes. That yeah, is, that's, a, 
that's exactly what my old filter used to give me. I'm like, well, I can't right. use this. Yeah. Right. It's just like a red hill with uh, yeah, uh, yeah. nothing around. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so I, I think some filters are like that. I know that, I know for a fact that the SkyTech one that I use was like that. And I have read that the, uh, the very popular astronomics, they're essentially clones of one another. And I have seen a lot of pictures online of people using the SkyTech and the Astronomic CLS CCD filters. And yeah, there's a lot of like red hue and remnants of just red dots on the picture, on a, on a, on what they would call a fully processed picture. I see. This is yeah. how I am in photo uh, post processing, but can you cure that simply with using some white balance or is it not that easy? Yeah, if, if I if I adjust the white balance, the the, the nebula, the North Amer uh, North American nebula itself is uh, appears to be red. If I um, post it, if I correct it with red, it it's gone. It's just gone. Uh, Lincoln, do you mind sharing the, that this particular like like TIFF with me? I, I like to kind of mess around with it. <laughs> The, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I don't have any TIFF right now because I, I got my hard drive just blown like last year and I just lost okay. all my photos except, except the, the one I posted on social media. That's why you see uh, the big ass watermark. It's for Instagram. This is for the Instagram size watermark. It's not yeah. for the desktop. Because I think, I think I got, you can play around. Yeah, go ahead. I got, I, I, I got one for you. <laughs> because I, I I think it's possible to play around with the curves, like to play around on the red curves to get some detail out of it. But I I I don't know until I see it. <laughs> I, yeah. I I have one for you that you could probably play around with. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I like to give it a shot just to see how it goes. <laughs> There's a I mean I'm learning a lot. There's tons that you can do in posts, way <laughs> more than you can you can like imagine because what you see is not what you get, right? <laughs> Right. Even the, with the, uh, a single frame, like uh, it's, it's really dark on a single frame. And when you st stack together with a two or three hours worth of data and it's just like, wow, it's, it's there. It's there. It's simply there. Yeah, I know that feeling. <laughs> right. And yeah, I think uh, that's all my photos I want to share. Uh, do you have any questions or something? I don't really have a question that I have more of a comment is that um, number one, I think it's really awesome that you're willing to go out there and take pictures because it's terrifying, man. Like it, it is it <laughs> like, I'm, like, like whenever I hear like bushes, you know, moving around, like what the hell is that? <laughs> it? It is. I, yeah, when you, it, it, especially when you do more of these, you're um, like if you go out at night, your family members started started to wondering like, what is this guy doing? If he's still alive, <laughs> night rider, <laughs> night rider, oh, that's crazy. And I yeah I, I that's why I slowly shifted to like um, hanging out with the SFAA members and and just pack with the parking lot and just stay there. I got yeah. a little chair, some warm drinks, and <laughs> just enjoy the night. A lot uh, better than anything else you find out there. Right, right. Uh, I've heard of you too, and they just make a little noise, but they don't come near you. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that a bear may see you in the side of the road. I don't to be afraid because you're a human. But not a lot yeah, and we got like. Normally we got ten people, twenty people right there. If if anything happens, we yeah, can we, just help yeah, each other. Help each other. We, we're at, but we're, we're mostly a deterrent. And if when you have two people together, the animals stay away. The coyotes oh. are different different. Uh, they make noise whether they're near you or not. So I see. They just, they just, um, and uh, I've heard of camping. In the middle of the night, so they just make noise. It's not nothing about you. <laughs> I see. Yeah, what uh, I once was camping at Yuba River. It's um, it's somewhere near Lake Tahoe, yeah. and I was sleeping in a tent, and I hear something just walking around at night. And the next morning, um, 
the the guy uh, who camping next to us, they got the they got their SUV just cracked open by a bear. Oh wow! I I I literally I I don't know if the bear actually had interest um like to the people inside the tent, but I think it's worse than in the tent than in a car. And yeah. I was totally sleeping. It, it's the food, man. Like, <laughs> if you leave anything in the car that's a food, they'll, they'll crack your car open like it's an egg. Yeah. <laughs> They're just looking for food. It's not, it's not about you and the, and the tent. They're not interested in you. But if you have snacks in your tent, oh, my God. Forget about oh. it. <laughs> they'll wake um, you up. They'll get in there. And, of course, it, once they realize you're in there, they'll get scared. Oh, so they um, they get intimidated. So that's when accidents happen. Um, but I, you should I honestly you should always go, go camping with bear safe canisters. Put yeah. your put your snacks away when you go to bed. Yeah. And 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 pray that you don't have any any uh, crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> I foot with me. Yeah. Yeah. I honestly never... don't know how how aggressive the bears are because I got a friend that's actually charged by a bear. And he was on the trail. I, I believe that uh, the the cub, just some small bear, is on the other side of the trail, and the the mother bear is on the on another side. And he was walking like with three or four people together, and he just saw the mother bear was just just charging towards him. And there's nothing you can think about. Your your brain is totally empty yeah. at the moment when you see a bear charging at you. Well, it, luckily the bear just stopped because that that's the way they scare people away. Yeah, the charge the charge is a scare tactic. Yeah, yeah. It's good to it's good to read about this if you're in the wild a lot. But it's still hard to process when you're faced by it. <laughs> what what type of bear? Black, brown? I don't know. I don't know how to like tell them the yeah, brown bear is a smaller one, right? Took, think of the picture you took was a black bear. That's a that's a what? Black bear. That's black bear. The the way you can tell is that the pa, the legs and the most of the color. Like if you take a histogram of this, most of the colors are black. Oh. Only, only the back is brown. Okay. Black is the one where you have to like if it attacks you, you have to fight back, right? Otherwise, you're dead. <laughs> brown bears are docile. They're a lot, I guess. Dopey. Uh, so brown bears are, are, are mostly brown. Like all of this black coloring will be gone. I see. That's interesting. Yeah. So the black and, and they're not that different when you first look at them. You see, you still see brown on the black bear. Oh. Okay. But it's mostly mostly black. Brown bears are all brown. Damn. The brown yeah. bears are on TV. I'm pretty like I, I feel. Have, yes, they're mostly brown. That's great. I feel happy that I share all the things tonight. That I, I I'm kind of, I'm, I'm learning a lot. The like Chris have big... you, 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 you had, you had some amazing pictures, especially of uh, Milky Way Galaxy. Yeah, I love that. I love the, the, the first pictures you showed with the lighthouse and the the car. And yeah. the Big Sur trees or the Tahoe trees, those were awesome. It's, yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely some lear learning curve. It, it's different from uh, Deep Sky. Where... Yeah, like I said, like Thirty seconds let you ca capture all that detail. You, you really love having the lighthouse with the car driving by. Oh, I love the lighthouse. It looked, uh, it looked great. It looked great. I wonder a lot, so it's um, kind of a go-to place, if weather permitted, and there are a lot of people just hanging around there. So if anything happens, imagine. Yeah. Wait, don't they like not let you park in the lot or something? Or the, the like, gate is always open. Hmm. I just remember something like if you go there, like there's a hotel or something on nearby or something, and they just don't really want people like being around there or something like well, that. You don't like people parking out their lot. It's everyone is parking on the lot. When I was there, the gate is always open. 
I'm I'm not sure if they have a policy on that. Hmm. It's been yeah, a while but, since I've been back. I probably should go take a trip down there. That's great. Yeah. Uh, any more questions or something? Uh, this is great. Like, thanks for sharing. All right. Thanks. Yeah. I, I I'm definitely learning when I'm sharing. I haven't expected that. There's so many information exchange that I, yeah, I'm learning a lot. Yeah, I like to, I like that the group is uh, giving you feedback on a few things and and also asking questions. Right. That uh, helps everybody capture some nugget information that they may have learned otherwise. Yeah. All right. So I'm uh, gonna uh, share quickly one of mine after I'm host. Sure. I'm gonna step uh, stop. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, and then I'll. I'll see if I can find my picture over the next few. And I'll, uh, if I cannot, I'll have somebody else host. Hey, Lincoln, how you doing? Uh, greetings, everybody. I'm sort of a lurker right here. Um, I've been a member for a while, but uh, when I'm at Mount Time, I typically don't chat with anybody, just with Anthony once in a while. Nice, nice. Gustavo, nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah, your Andromeda photo is, is my goal. Thank you. It's, it's, well, it, honestly, it's not, it's not difficult. It's, I got some luck out of it, but that, that's the, not very difficult. Would, would you say like the... The number one thing is just to get, go to more dark skies. Oh, um, yeah. There's something uh, um, I want to like. I'm struggling. So the the first solution is to go to a darker sky that you don't have to modify anything to get a pure data that you want. And the second thing, uh, the second method is to go for a real telescope that I can access a more a lot more of the stable mount narrow band imaging that I can do on my driveway and I can I can get a lot more exposure time out of it that's something <laughs> what what uh, what telescope are you aiming for I don't know um I honestly don't know there's a guy in our group that uh, he's uh posting amazing photos um I, I forgot his name but yeah, he's always there posting uh, uh, amazing photos. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has like like insane 10 hours exposure time or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, I, the name is in, in Chinese, so I don't know who he is. Yeah. Yeah, I obviously can't find him. I mean, I remember, remember logs. Uh, it might even just uh somebody who joined the facebook group even doesn't come up doesn't come over although he he shoots from from the city so he's a local yeah he uh he lives around san jose i remember okay so i have two photos to share uh preview See how that goes. <clears throat> While we're waiting on that, I just wanted to ask if anyone has time to uh try to take a shot of uh, M57. I posted that that close crop uh, a couple of weeks ago or maybe two weeks ago or something like that. Um, of M57, I have limited capability in what I can grab and what I know how to post process, but I'd love to see some of you guys who are better at it uh, try to grab that. Okay. If you need pointers on how to, on how to get it in your, in your view, I'll, I can help you with it. I think the, the, the struggle of uh, of me is I don't have a big enough, long enough um, focal length. 
I don't think anyone has a long enough open wing for M57. I have, oh, I have nice. a 35 millimeter equivalent of 300 millimeters. I was able to get something fun to look at at least. But. Yeah. <laughs> um, shooting M57 is like shooting a planet. <laughs> That's amazing, PJ. Wow. I have uh, my first attempt at the Milky Way. This was taken uh, a block away from Dolores Park. Wow. Dolores really? Park? Wait, wow. what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. What? How? Yeah, yeah. This was with no, uh, actually, I, I had a CLS filter, not the CLS CCD. So my camera is not modified. Even with a filter, how? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, so uh, the place where I was, a block for Dolores, I was simply, I was trying to take star trails, but then I decided to take a, uh, a set of short exposures because I knew the Milky Way was supposed to be there. And I simply, I was lucky enough to capture it. I see and, Andromeda too. And Andromeda too. So this is the, this is the Northern Milky Way. Right. That's crazy. Damn. This is right <laughs> That's great. The, this is right from my front porch when I was staying uh, late July, uh, actually near middle of July. Dolores Park. I, I... A block of Dolores. Uh, uh, north. Yeah, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I'm shooting overhead uh, with uh, uh, northern uh, uh, Mostly trending north. The, uh, this was about around eleven o'clock, so the Milky the Andromeda had risen enough over the houses that I could capture it, and then the double cluster and the rest of the northern Milky Way. There, I was just a little bit short of capturing the neb uh, at the top of the at the top of the picture, but it's. Uh, <laughs> All you can see, that's all I can see. The nav really at the very top. Uh, I I can't believe you you got I, I can't believe anyone can see the Milky Way. Yeah, from well, so the city. I was looking at the there's no street lights uh right directly in front of this tree. <laughs> uh the street uh, light is uh, <clears throat> a few yard, a few hundred yards away. The house I turned. I had the neighbor turn off all their houses. They were very nice and complied. They were dicks like most neighbors are. I turned off wow. in front of my porch. Uh, it was eleven, so uh, there were a few cars around. But and, and the only lights were from the Loris, uh, the the bridge and the the lights. The city keeps on. Uh, at the corners of the park, but the bridge, the bridge on on Church is the where most of the light is in Dolores. I am so envious of the two of you who are able to get pictures of the Milky Way. I have to wait until next summer to take a crack at it. Yeah, so I had just bought my Star Adventure, so I was able to take a longer exposure. Oh, so you got you got a Star Adventure too? Congrats. Yeah. I just, got, I just got that. You can get the Milky Way. You just gotta drive somewhere a little darker. <laughs> yeah, and then I was I was uh, going for Star Trails when I realized the Milky Way was in front of me. So I thought, let me let me get the, a few short exposures and uh, and track it. I, I don't even, I don't remember the total integration time. I didn't record it. But the, uh, the exposures were something like 20 seconds. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. That's uh, what, I'm, what width are you using? <laughs> Millimeter? Lens? I believe this was a 50. 50. 50 minutes. Nice. F2. Well, I have two of the same picture here. That's, for, that's weird. Hmm. 
Yeah, so let me let me close this. And I'll, I, go, I'll get back uh, with uh, with the the second picture. Oh, I I, yeah. must, I exported it twice. That's why I have it twice. You know, you know, George, I I'm already hesitant on going out in the field to take photos um, because just trying to capture Neo eyes was scary enough. And after hearing your stories tonight, I I refuse to go out there unless <laughs> I have a, I, unless I have like 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 a band of people around me. It doesn't. Well, it depends on where you go. Okay, like there are some places that are easier and safer than others. Yeah, it makes well, it from your from your backyard. Well, and then, and I feel like I feel like most of these places will have like zero cell phone reception. So, like, no, I I need I I need a band of people around me if I'm going to be out there. You need bear spray, Just a can of bear spray. You know, one place I really yeah. recommend to go if you were to like if you were just like completely alone and you want to do this would be like you know the i, I don't want to do this uh, <laughs> like <laughs> time on the one uh, you you yeah. can get eventually get to a place on well most along the one is probably fine but like if you go down to brixby bridge along the one you're almost like to big sur you're halfway there to like big sur right like most of the way there but that area is like generally pretty safe because there's literally a parking lot right there Okay, you can just stop by the bridge and then you can see the Milky Way right into the water. <laughs> so last night I was browsing around looking for a class four spot as close as possible. And what I the, what I came up with, I live in Silver Terrace in the in the city, so kind of in the in the armpit of the freeways and um, uh, Moss Beach, you know, like where the distillery is down there. Um, so it's down one. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh pretty is i think it's 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 just a few miles north of half moon bay and uh so that's class four uh but i'm thinking you know if i'm sitting in some parking lot you know i don't know with a few thousand dollars worth of equipment i'm more i'm more concerned about people than i am about <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the point yeah <laughs> i well, uh, honestly, I, I don't know if there's anyone trying to rob you in the middle of night 3 a.m out of the <laughs> middle of nowhere <laughs> There's a lot of opportunity opportunists out there. You have to be careful. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I grew up in New York City, City, right? So somebody burglar in the city goes out to this, out to the, uh, out to half a bay to have a beer, and you're there at Moss Beach as an easy target. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's what scares me. My wife thought I was gonna go, and, and I ended up just going to the backyard. She didn't know that's what I was going out to do, and she's like, "Please be careful." Yeah, if uh, if that's the backyard. You don't got any of the frustration yeah. and that that's the way to win to a uh, narrow band yeah yeah the natural natural narrow band yeah so uh i have a picture to share wow Ooh, i like that color is that is that from dolores part two <laughs> <laughs> no, this is so, so continuing our story about being out in the woods in the middle of nowhere this is from Point Reyes. Oh, is I was that the ocean? Ask you, I was that the ocean? That's the ocean, yeah. Wow. That's the You're on the beach? <laughs> I'll explain it, yeah. I was going to ask you if that was Bolinas Lagoon, but uh, that's great. I, I went to Bolinas Lagoon that night. I was looking for a spot. And I ended up going, going west too far and actually ended up in Point Reyes. So I'm a few miles from... Bolinas Lagoon, uh, mostly south, uh, southwest of Bolinas Lagoon. And I found a pretty good spot. It's not too marshy. Uh, I'm close to the water, close to the ocean. That's beautiful. And I thought that was good. So I see the Milky Way reflected on the water, and I'm like, great, it's awesome. I set up. Okay. Uh, long exposure at my tracker, so I don't get any star trails. I looked out and I got two waves. If you can see my my cursor, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have two waves breaking on the beach along here and here. Single shot, or is there like a stack on top and a long exposure below? Yeah, I had a longer exposure below, or a shorter exposure below. 
Oh. So I took uh, a, basically multiple compos- a composite of multiples for the Milky Way and one long exposure for the water. That's, That's amazing, yeah. I composted it, but I, I locked out that. I, I wasn't even, you know, I mean, it's totally dark. So I don't really know what's going to be captured by the camera. Is that Jupiter in that bright spot right there? Photo yeah. the waves broke, and I didn't notice that the movement of the water, as the water washes in and and, and returns, will create this uh, elongated uh, right at the at the for the stars closest to me, and perfect reflections of everything else. It's the, the the reflection stars are actually brighter than they're in yeah, the sky. Was, well, that because it's a longer exposure. Yeah. Oh. It's, it was a longer exposure, so the motion is uh, also causing the the trails. Wow. And that's yeah. <laughs> that's uh, Jupiter. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Saturn is probably right here. Yeah. And then that's the moon actually setting. Oh. I was, trying to, I was trying to capture it, but the, the fog at the very edge of the water uh, obscured, it, obscured it. What is the? Uh, what are the two dots on the right? Just on the like, on the horizon? Is that a ship? Yeah, these are probably boats. Oh. But the and then this is fog. It, it look at first I thought this was the water. When I first took the photo, but that's fog. But so that, um, at least two are probably boats. Okay. And Just that me. might be a boat too. And that. I I I don't know if they're fogs or they're uh, um they're uh, light pollutions. So if the you're looking through the horizon and and that part is going to be very dense if anything is floating in the air. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's there's does it look at west? I I figured they're boats. Oh, but the black the yeah. black is the waves, right? Yeah, Crest- this this is a uh, cresting waves breaking, breaking closer to me than yeah. It just looks like it's on the horizon, but it's not. But this is a uh, because I'm sure I'm also trying to capture the the wet sand. Because I noticed there are stars reflected on it, so I'm shooting okay. kind of down. Are you on a beach or are you on a dam, like standing over the beach or something? No, I'm at the beach. I'm getting I'm getting wet. Oh, <laughs> wow! My feet and and my my pants are getting wet. I took my my shoes off and I walked into the beach from the car. That's <laughs> why I don't feel bad. Like the stars reflected on the water, so I need I wanted to capture that. Wow. I wanted to, I didn't want to, I only had a 50 millimeter. So this is as the, what the IC is basically. I'm, I'm as close to uh, what I saw, except that the Milky Way standing out really bright. I didn't see that brightness, obviously with the naked eye. But this shot is uh, what a person will see if they were standing the same place I was. That's what a 50 millimeter F2 does. And is this a full frame? Uh, I cropped very little. Uh, it's my memory is actually the camera is a, it's a crop, crop camera. Sorry, I, I misunderstood your question. So I have a crop sensor. It's a T, T, uh, Canon T7. Yeah, I use an Olympus. Mm. Also, the, the tripod is on, in the water. It's shooting, uh, so I'm tracking Polaris, but the, the camera is pointing a little bit down to capture the, the wet side. Oh, so this is on a tracker. Yeah, it's a lot, uh, multiple exposures for the Milky Way. The only yeah. thing that's a long exposure is the water. Well, that's you- very advanced technique. <laughs> I, 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 can't imagine, I can't imagine how it feels like middle of the night and you're standing in the water and you have to align the tracker. <laughs> yeah, well, 
I had a full view of Polaris. I didn't have no trouble. Oh. It was really quick. I did the uh, drift alignment as I went. And uh, when I felt comfortable, then I turned the, the camera towards uh, the Milky Way. Are you oh. using Starry Landscape? Sorry? Are you using Starry Landscape Stacker? Uh, Sky Safari and uh, the Polar Alignment app for uh, the Star Adventure. Uh, okay. I would recommend using the, the, the app that Jason was just mentioning. OK. Uh, I've, it's really good for stacking. Like, it's really good for stacking like star or like Milky Way photos, like wide landscape, because uh -huh. it actually creates a mass for you for the for like just the Milky Way, and then you can stack it onto any photo, you know, for uh, underneath it. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's meant for like what you're doing, exactly what you're doing. Uh -huh. Star uh -huh. landscape. Before, when I, I used to do uh, astrophotography on film back in the nineties. Wow! But uh, I it was really grueling. It was it was a really hard hobby, so I, I quit. <laughs> it still is. I'm used I'm used to compositing manually, and in fact, that's my I plan to do that as my specialty. Uh, I I really like. Nightscape photos like Lincoln showed, uh, and I'll I'll probably continue taking pictures like this with city landmarks and other stuff. Uh, yeah, I I I think you should because it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely go for the East Sky object every now and then, but I my passion is uh. Nightscapes with any kind of, it doesn't have to be the Milky Way. It could be star trails. It could be a constellation like yeah. at, uh, for that season next to an object. Uh, and I kind of bring the nice guy to the to common people by having a familiar object with some star stuff behind it. So since this picture, I haven't had any any chance to go out the weather has incorporated the, I was in the hospital the week that we had really good weather. So I haven't had a you chance. Right? I'm sorry? You all right? You yeah. all right? Yeah. They're taking good care of me. Uh, I found some stuff wrong with my heart, but the mm -hmm. doctors are figuring out how to fix it. My mother was all right. Here. So yeah, the, the week that we had really good weather was inside and I couldn't go out and take pictures. Uh so that's the uh this was I believe August or September. Early September, I believe. If not uh middle of August. I, I don't remember the date. I don't have a <clears throat> I have to What's up, my computer is October 24th. Yeah, that's, that's the day. So that's just, uh... oh, wait, here we go. August 22, 10 p.m. Mm. So that's, that's when I took the photo. Good thing I, uh, the exit data is still on it. So yeah, mid, mid, uh, late August. That's the last time I was able to use the the tracker and camera. I still have I have the camera with me, but I, I'm stuck inside. And uh, these last few nights it's, have been tricky. It's, it's sunny outside and then cloudy. So, but soon enough, I'll have another chance. I might. I have a, my next target will probably be somewhere in the city. So I'll definitely need a better uh, light pollution filter. Yeah, the, actually, the, the first one I was taking with the CLS filter from Astronomic. 
Uh, mm. This one at, at Point Reyes has no filter because I was it was completely dark and there were no lights except for Bolinas, the town of Bolinas. Yeah. You could have been north and, uh, but I had no other any lights anywhere near me. I was I was actually a bit afraid of uh, being so far from uh, Bolinas. Uh, like you and from Nana Bolinas. Uh, and I didn't, I also was afraid of getting, getting stuck in the marsh in Point Reyes. I didn't want to drive too far in and get stuck. But that's what was actually pretty good. There was a paved road and and you could still get on the beach. I can't no, I, wait. I can't wait until the next summer and uh, take a crack at the Milky Way. I'm well, I'm willing to brave the cold temperatures. I'm gonna try shooting over over the winter and I keep an eye out on the on the sky. I, it's amazing how sometimes I, obviously the city's fogged in, but if you can get out east away from the fog. Uh, even though it might be cold, you might, you might be able to get some good time under the stars. The problem is finding some somewhere safe. I usually like, like I used to take a yearly trip to like Lake uh, Sonoma, and then I can usually shoot the Milky Way from there. Yeah, we have a group of uh, members that go to Lake Sonoma. I don't know if they go together or if they just go to Lake Sonoma different times. But we definitely have uh, more astrophotographers than we have on tonight that head out there. I live in Sonoma County, but I haven't haven't gone there much. Um, I typically, when I do try to go, is Point Reyes. But the, the challenge is that fog comes in a lot, so yeah. it's not. You got lucky that that one day. I was lucky. That, that was, that was uh, a night in August where we had. Excellent weather, and I just said I'll I'm gonna go to uh, either Bolinas or Inverness or somewhere to take a picture, and I just kept looking for a good spot, uh, but I didn't find uh, like a landscape object that I could center on that would be recognizable. Like, didn't have a lighthouse like uh, Lincoln did, and there was nothing else recognizable. And uh, I lucked out to find this spot after I gave up on Polina's Lagoon. Do you drive actually to the, I think the first beach is, isn't it the, what they call the South Beach? Is, is that where you went or was it somewhere before there? This is, this is way north. Polina's, Polina's Lagoon is uh, at, the, at the northern edge of Port Reyes. Oh. So none of those. Uh, I, I also didn't drive into Point Reyes. I, I, I was okay. so much on the uh, on one, basically a long one. Uh, so Inverness, uh, the place, uh, what do you call it? The uh, Oyster Place, uh, a long one. And uh, what's the name of the other? Uh, Waterway there, I forget. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, need, I need a map to get the name. Yeah. Yeah, but I just I just basically drove up the marine headlands heading towards Polinas. Uh, Okay, so, so now, Tomales, sorry. Yeah, Tomales. So, so Tomales, Tomales Bay is, is, is the, the water that you're seeing? No. Uh, Dillon Beach. 
Oh, got it. Okay. So this is actually not on Point Reyes. This is a desert beach. And I was wrong. Uh, I was not uh, near Bolinas Lagoon. I, I did try Bolinas Lagoon on my trip. I get stuck in the mud over there. Yeah, so I just kept driving north along one. Point Reyes Station, Inverness. And I got to Marshall. That Yeah, Marshall's where they, they have the the uh, oysters. I've been there multiple times in the, during the daytime. And then I just kept driving. Uh, so I'm probably capturing part of Tomales Bay and Dillon Beach capturing some of the Pacific because I'm, I'm pointing somewhat, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pointing southwest. Mm -hmm. So there might be a bit of Tomales Bay, but I'm, I'm on Dillon Beach. So this is actually a beach on the Pacific. Yeah, I've been there. Uh, I'm sorry, I said Point Reyes. Point Reyes was in in my trip, so I thought I was at Point Reyes. A nice photo. So then, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll, if anybody else wants to share, or if you have any more questions. I'll save it for next time. Oh, I'll have a I'll have a deck next time. <laughs> oh, we're looking forward to it, man. Um, I, I think Lincoln uh, actually and Angus and I have like very similar stories. So if I if I show anything today, it just look like you're looking at the same deck. So I'll wait till yeah. next. <laughs> I'll wait till next month. Uh, and I, I think my background will be a little bit, my journey will be a little bit different. It's a little longer than theirs. So, uh, and I, I will, I'll just start at the night sky and then move my way into astral. Yeah. Actually closer to Lincoln's, I guess, than, than Angus's. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks for sharing, guys. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for sharing. That was. Uh... Well, everybody did a great job sharing and telling their story. I guess stories may say Lincoln's also. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, they could definitely with the story of the bell ringing all around them and then the bear that, that definitely that's definitely uh, tops everything I've seen. I mean the closest I've gotten to wildlife, like I said, was raccoons uh, mostly as an SFAA lecture ended and also out in the field. Uh, there was a time that we had a get together at the Sessions restaurant at the edge of on the Presidio. That's uh, near Chestnut and, Lomb and Lombard. And uh, as you come into the city on also from uh, from my time after the bridge, if you if you stay to the left to the left, you end up at a stoplight a few hundred meters from the sessions. So anyway, one time we, we had a get together of sessions for SFA, yeah, and that's we're coming out. I'm sitting in my car trying to get my GPS to direct me home. And I see one raccoon jump the fence, or rather the 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 wall over at in the, in the, to the presidio divided the city from the presidio and hide under our car. Then uh, probably a minute later, I see four baby raccoons do the same thing: jump, jump the wall and hide under the car. The mom then takes off across the street and gets under another car. And it's waiting there for the other car, the other raccoons to come over. But since they're babies, they're learning how to how to live in the wild, or rather live in the city. So they're hesitant to cross the street. <laughs> and it's funny how you see four baby raccoons try to take off and get scared and run back. 
on there one at a time. Uh, they're taking turns or hesitant to cross the street. And then finally one makes it, one runs all, all the way over without stopping. The other three are waiting. And, and it's just, I spend the, ne the next half hour seeing these raccoons trying to get their, their courage to cross the street. It was beautiful. I was safely in my car, just 10 feet away from this. Uh, another time we were coming out of a lecture at the Presidio when back when they let us use the Presidio. Uh, lookout post to do the lectures. This is very close to the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, and as I was waiting for my ride to pick me up, I, I, did, I only had a few pieces of paper on me and my wallet. As I'm waiting for the uh, my ride to come, a raccoon is coming out of the back of the building into the parking lot, sees me and freezes in place like like it's a uh, scare too and uh, it starts moving very slowly while keeping its eyes on me down the path and into the parking lot. It's basically moving where it was intended to go, but it was looking at me all the whole time. Like it turns, it even starts walking backwards. Uh, it was the weirdest thing, but it didn't, you know, hiss or, or do anything violent. But it was at its closest was something like five feet. And as it continued on the parking lot, it, you know, it got to 30 feet and then it, it started climbing a tree backwards, like it, it used its, its back paws to climb the tree. So it was still looking at me even though it was climbing. And then my ride came and I got in the car and the, the mm -hmm. was up a tree like 20 feet, <laughs> either trying to get away from me or that's where I was really wanting to go in the beginning. But it had been lurking in the back of the building while we were doing our lecture. So I have probably gone in the, in the garbage bin back there for quite a while. And uh, that's, that's the closest I've been to a raccoon, but it's only been raccoons. I, I've seen deer, I've heard coyotes in the distance, but I never see them. All right. Um, well, call it a night. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a little bit. Yeah, we're pretty I'm much. Gonna, I'm gonna go get dinner now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cook dinner in the bet between the lectures, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, gonna, I'm gonna eat my food uh, right now. All right. Thanks, guys, for sharing. Really, that was fun. That was that was awesome. Thank you, guys. Yeah, Thanks fun. for having me. Really Great. glad to uh, to see all of you guys. Yeah, sure. See yeah, you bye. guys. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good night. Have a good night. Good night. Bye.